chin. Glenn's in the back, in the middle. Jim is to the right. Of I don't see Bob Gillies. Good evening, everybody. Good night. Welcome to the regular monthly meeting of the Board of Commissioners held for the purpose of transacting the general business of the township. Today's date is January 11th, 2023. The meeting is being held in the Springfield Township Building, also being offered on a live streaming feature. The meeting will also be made available on the township's website beginning tomorrow morning. Comments will not be accepted remotely during the meeting, but instructions for submitting public comment in advance of tonight's meeting were provided as part of the posted agenda. Please stand and join the Board of Commissioners in a moment of silent reflection to honor the service men and women who place themselves in harm's way in order to help preserve our safety at home and overseas. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would entertain a motion dispensing with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting as written and recorded in the official minute book of the township. So like that. Have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any comments or questions? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a unanimous vote. Uh, I'd like to just recognize the uh, attendance of a couple uh, former commissioners, Glenn Sham and Jim Daly. Thank you for being here. Board of Commissioners conducted an executive session as part of its January 9th, 2023 workshop meeting to discuss one personnel matter and one real estate matter. Um, at this time, uh, we typically go right into the uh, public comment. I'm gonna make a statement uh, opening that. Um, obviously, the, there's an issue before us tonight that has uh, raised a lot of interest uh, at our Monday workshop meeting. Um, probably just as many people, if not more, uh, were in the room. Um, it's a matter that's been discussed really over the better part of uh, almost a year and a half. Um, so people have come in and out of the conversation. Some people um, are in it. Some people are just learning about it for the first time, maybe. So uh, on Monday evening, uh, I made an opening statement uh, to frame it because a lot of times when people come out, they're not fully aware of the history. We end up sort of rehashing it as it goes and it gets gets a little confusing. So. Uh, I'm going to read a similar statement uh, that we did on Monday, basically the same statement uh, as framing it, and I think that'll help uh, be more efficient so that um, everyone that wants a chance to talk about it can come up and have their due time. <clears throat> First off, the symbolism that's been at the heart of these discussions since 2021 is the American flag variation of the more traditional thin blue line symbol that was uh, prominently uh, in existence starting in 2014 in the wake of the Black Lives Matter movement, sometimes referred to as the thin blue line flag or the blue lives matter flag. One variation is currently used as the official logo of the Springfield Township Police Benevolent Association. Sometimes you'll hear it referred to as the PBA. The PBA exists as the bargaining unit for the rank and file police officers in the township, as well as for community service and outreach. To be clear, because there have been some confusion on what this resolution uh, is about. The resolution for debate and vote tonight does not address the PBA's current logo, like most of the discussion about the matter have been to date. This is a very specific policy as it relates to township employees while working and display at township properties. The proposed resolution does not restrict use by the PBA its members while off duty, if not in uniform, or the display at any public or private event. The American flag version of the thin blue line first came into the purview of the township in the spring of 2021, when outdoor signage bearing the flag was displayed at the Little League baseball fields. A number of residents expressed concern about the display and lodged complaints with the township and directly with the Little League. 
Signage was promptly removed. I would note that the signage was not the logo for the PBA nor affiliated with their materials. Again, we're making a very clear distinction between the American flag variation that is relatively new and the more traditional uh, blue thin line that dates back to the, the 50s in terms of its prominent use uh, in honoring police. The PBA logo featuring the symbolism came to a more prominent awareness when it was displayed as part of a banner spanning across Willow Grove Avenue in Winmore advertising for an upcoming car show in the fall of 2021. A number of commissioners met with several police officers who are members of the PBA shortly after in November 2021 to discuss the logo. And we asked them to consider changing the logo to remove this variation of the flag from their official materials. While we acknowledge then, continue to do so, that we understand many folks only interpret the symbolism as a positive way to honor the service and sacrifice of our police officers. It also means something more to community members that are traditionally marginalized in our society, and not just people that are marginalized, but especially people of color, based on when and how the specific flag rose to popularity and how it has been more recently prominently adopted by extremist groups. To be clear, I am not telling people how they should feel about the flag or that their interpretation is right or wrong, but I'm pointing out that it's different and powerful for different people. One of the compromise proposals that was offered was to have the logo amended to a more traditional all black background, with the thin blue line. The PBA membership did deliberate on the matter and ultimately decided to keep the logo as is. Our business meeting in April 21, 2021, excuse me, featured several speakers that were invited by Commissioner Graham and many residents were in attendance and shared their views over a meeting that lasted several hours. It was contentious at times, but also informative. Discussions continued over the next few months regarding changing the logo. And I believe another deliberation, either in the summer or the early fall, the PBA chose to keep the symbol as is. Later that this past fall, the board authorized, do we know who's, is this me? That's you. That's me? What am I doing? It's just my booming voice. Okay, sorry about that. Later this past fall, the board authorized, uh, which was not unanimous, a letter from council to the PBA that formally requested that the logo be changed or to have Springfield Township removed as part of its literature. A member of the public read the letter in its entirety during our December business meeting, and we have the full video posted on our website if anyone wants to check that out, as well as commentary from the commissioners and members of the public. We have had discussions regarding the possible litigation of the matter over several months, and we know it is not an easy decision, nor is it clear that litigation would be successful or worth it. One of the main arguments we have been presented and repeatedly with is that the board has proper jurisdiction over department policies and official symbolism of the township. The PBA is a private and separate entity that is not under the same jurisdiction. So again, to be clear, this resolution only seeks to clarify and codify what is mostly already in practice, and that as a government body, we are sensitive to the controversial nature of the specific symbolism, how it is viewed as harmful by residents in our community. Therefore, it is not appropriate to be on display representing the township. We know that many, many members of the public only have positive feelings towards this flag. I respect those sentiments as it relates to honoring police officers. And in return, no one should equate a strong disagreement about symbolism as a lack of support for our police. That is a lazy argument that we have heard and it is just not based in reality. In fact, Monday was National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day in the US and we should all express our gratitude. My dad retired as an inspector in the Philadelphia Police Department and I'm hesitant to bring that up just because I feel like I've shared it so many times but seeing and knowing his service was one of the main influences in my life to be an active part of a community and ultimately run for public service. It doesn't give me any authority over anyone else. I just share it to highlight my lifelong deep respect for police. And it's not in opposition to that respect to have a different view how policing can be improved here and now. If this passes and the dust settles, I believe this helps make our community safer and safer for our officers. There are always gonna be dangerous stops dangerous criminals that will inflict harm on our officers. But there are also interactions with police that end poorly out of fear and mistrust. Bridging that gap of trust in ways that we can control makes it better for everyone. The whole community benefits from creating trust among us all. 
We understand this is a passionate topic for many people. We ask and expect your comments to be respectful and maintain a level of decorum. This is not a forum for personal attacks. When you come to the microphone to speak, please begin by stating your full name and address. We ask you to keep your comments to three minutes. If you have a specific question, it may be answered in the moment, if appropriate, but an, uh, the response may be that it's just a comment and we'll move on to make sure everyone can say their piece. Um, now, for those of you that haven't been to a business meeting, it's a little bit different than a workshop meeting. So the Monday workshop meeting is really more of an open forum, it's a little more back and forth dialogue. We take no official action at our Monday meeting. There's no binding votes. So um, the public comment kind of went all night, you know, until people are done. The business meeting is, is different. So I want you to be aware of that. And the way it works is we open it to public comment, come to the microphone, say your piece. Um, I would, if you have a repeat comment, I would ask that you make sure everyone who wants to speak has already spoken. Again, try to keep it to three minutes. If it just keeps going on and on, then we'll, we'll have to be more strict on that. But I want to allow people to, to really, really share their view and be heard. Um, so once we end the public comment, we go into our committee reports, which includes voting on this matter and debate on this matter. But at that time, there's no more public comment. So if you have something to say, uh, this upcoming period is the time to do it. Um, one thing I passed over, uh, we did receive public comment uh, from folks uh, in, in anticipation of the meeting that couldn't be here. So. Mike, do you want to report on that? Sure. Since 5 p.m. on Monday evening and 5 p.m. this evening, there were 18 emails submitted through the township's public comment form on the website. Those emails were as follows. Uh, 15 pertain to resolution number 1592, in which 11 were in favor of adopting the resolution, three were clearly opposed, and one made a general statement about the flag of the United States. Additional comments were received as follows. One was from an Erdenheim resident who summarized the impacts of single-use plastic bags on the environment. One was from a resident of Lucon Road in Orland who thanked the board for coordinating the installation of a piece of sidewalk on Halls Lane. One was from a representative of the Falcon Hill Estates Homeowners Association who thanked the board of commissioners, the township engineer, and township staff for their assistance through the dedication of public improvements within their neighborhood as well as the transition from private to public refuse and recycling <coughs> collection. That was it. Great. Thank you, Mike. And uh, we will be sure we will include those um, comments as part of the official record in the minutes. So, yes. so they will be a part. Mr. President, quick question too. Can we also incorporate the uh, emails that we received before 5 p.m. on Monday? So the, the batch that we received on Monday, can we? So we did discuss that. It's really appropriate that they are part of the minutes from the workshop meeting. So they can be part of the public record. But They'll be attached to the minutes of the workshop meeting, right. which, as you know, are kind of more like notes uh, that, that we keep for the board's purposes than official minutes uh, okay. or traditional minutes. But they're publicly available. They're generally not publicly available. The workshop minutes? Workshop minutes are not posted. So we because, again, because they're, they're kept more as notes than anything right. else. We'll circle back. We'll circle back on that. Okay. Uh, the board is now open to comments or questions from the public. The board draws particular attention to those items listed on the agenda this evening. Please be advised that once the committee reports begin, the board can no longer accept questions from the floor. The conclusion of the committee reports, public comments will once again be accepted. However, official action on those issues listed on the agenda will have already taken place. Therefore, if you wish to comment on an agenda item, now will be the appropriate time. And again, we will open it up at the end, but official action is taken. But if you just want to tell us how much you liked it or didn't like it, uh, you can do that too. So again, um, when you come to the microphone, please state your name and address and the floor is open. One at a time, please. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Liza Maris, and I'm representing the Cheltenham area branch of the NAACP, which serves Jenkintown, Cheltenham, Springfield, Plymouth, and White Marsh Townships. So I know what it means to fight racism. It is hard work. 
it's hard work because the more successful that you are, the more likely it is that certain things will happen to you. You will be lied to and lied about. You'll be yelled at, insulted, and threatened. They will threaten your job, your livelihood, your property, and your life. In fact, many of the most successful civil rights leaders had their lives taken from them, or they had to flee a state or the country in order to keep their lives and their freedom. And this transcends race. There have always been white people who risked their lives and black people who defended the status quo. So I know what it takes to draft a resolution like this, to disavow a symbol of white supremacy, to do the right thing. And I know that you are hurting because I am hurting. And there are those who are too scared to be here who are hurting. And everyone in this room is hurting because we are all fighting for something that we care deeply about. And we feel like we are fighting for our lives, all of us together. And we are hurting for one simple reason. None of us are free if one of us is chained. None of us are free. And this all goes back to one man, Bartolome de las Casas. He was a priest and he came to America on one of Columbus's ships. And when Columbus had enslaved and almost eradicated the Dianos in the Caribbean, only 1,000 remained hiding in the mountains. De las Casas pleaded for their lives. He had a better idea. He suggested that they go to Africa and bring black folks to America so he could enslave them instead. And we have been suffering the negative consequences of that evil act for 400 years. I remain hopeful, however, because I know the history of America and I know the history of this very land that we are standing on. Every generation has taken steps to move away from that evil act. The first anti-slavery speech was given a few miles down the road at Richard Wall House. Pennsylvania was one of the first states to abolish slavery, being influenced by the Quakers who lived here. One of the first free black settlements was owned by uh, Cremona Mari. She owned 200 acres on Arcadia University's campus in the 1740s. The constitution was written just a few miles away from here as well. And although it enshrined enslavement into our government, it also banned the slave trade after 1808, thinking that that would fix it. They were wrong but they believed that it would fix it because they also sat in rooms like this, feeling all of the same emotions that we are until they reached a compromise. This resolution is beautiful. It states that Springfield Township does not want to be associated with a white supremacist symbol. Not if it means that to everyone, but if it means that to anyone. And I know what it takes to stand up against racism. And so I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Neil DeFranco, 14 Highland Avenue in Flower Town. Thank you for this opportunity. <clears throat> um, something I don't have written down, I just wanna make an observation. Uh, there was police activity a block from my house tonight and uh, I felt wonderful to see our police force on the streets protecting and serving. It appeared to be a DUI. Um, I had to pass it twice because I was bringing my kids back and forth to uh, activities and just the level of professionalism and patience that I observed as they appeared to try and teach this person how to walk a straight line. I mean, it was commendable. It sounds silly, but just, I was very impressed. Um, I then had to go back to the same location uh, for our Girl Scout meeting. And I was able to listen to them as they were explaining to the gentleman that he was about to be put in handcuffs and it was just nothing but professionalism. Um, so the problem is we were at a Girl Scout meeting. I don't know why this makes me emotional, I apologize. But one of my Girl Scout parents sent me a text message and said, my daughter can't come because there's police activity. And I assured her that it was almost over, not only that it was almost over, but it was completely under control. And, um, and they did come back and they observed that that was in fact true and they came in. 
But um, I mean, the point is, <clears throat> um, I really appreciate the work that the police officers do in our district, and and I support them whether or not I see them doing their jobs. You know, re regardless of whether or not I have a sign on my lawn, it, it it doesn't matter. I support them and I appreciate them, and I just want to point out how how. Uh, nice a job they appeared to be doing um, this evening. Um, at Monday's meeting when I was here, and, and if you can't answer this, I understand, there was an exchange at one point that really confused me. I didn't understand where it was coming from. I didn't understand how it applied to what we were talking about. There was some reference to how this whole thing started with a Facebook post. And it could have been avoided without a Facebook post. And I don't understand how it's possible that we've spent all this time and 20,000 or some dollars uh, over something that was created from a Facebook post. Is, like, what, what does that mean? What, what is that? Is that? That really just references to how it, the issue was first arose internally and so, discussed. And, and we can just leave it. We don't have to get okay. to that. That's a long time ago. We've okay. gotten past that. Fair, fair enough. It just, it made it sound like the Facebook post was the catalyst. And, and I know that that's impossible because we, I, I can't imagine we'd be here for, for something like that. Um, so, because if it was a Facebook post, this whole thing could have been avoided. I think everybody in this room would agree with that. Um, you know, I, I, otherwise, if we're holding on a logo because of pride, that, that's, that's scary. Um, and I don't think that's that's something that that our hardworking police officers would want. Um, and the post must have been pretty horrendous if it was created from a Facebook post, but I doubt that. So I said previously that I fully support the resolution, and and that's not entirely true. It's not entirely accurate. Um, I actually agree with a number of commissioners on the board and many members of the community that the resolution is redundant. We kind of hashed that out on Monday. It's redundant. However, I find it very ironic that it's not obvious to everybody why this resolution is necessary, regardless of the redundancy. It's symbolism, right? We're talking about a symbol and we've got a resolution that ends up being symbolism. It shows how the commissioners hear their constituents and how they understand how controversial this flag is and how it makes certain people feel. And that's important. Um, everybody who spoke on Monday spoke passionately and with conviction. Uh, unfortunately, I have to say this, and, and I apologize, it's going to be a little d d d divisive, but I, I heard racist comments. Um, and that, that scares me, that we had that at a, a commissioner's meeting in Springfield Township. And if you don't think you heard any racist comments, just try. Try to look inward. Try to do some self-reflection. Try to understand why I and many other community members believe that we saw racist comments, okay? Um, because whether you agree that they're racist or not, that's how people feel. And that's, that should bother people. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to say something that's wrong. I do it all the time. Um, but we should learn from these mistakes. We should try and do better. If we turn around and make the same mistake over and over again, it's not a mistake, it becomes intentional. Additionally, talking about intent, I don't know that this was the intent or not. And thankfully, this meeting feels completely different. But the meeting on Monday. Neil, maybe you could get to a final point and then you could come back up later. I just <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that. I, I can I can come back. I can come back later because um, I've got a whole nother page. <laughs> thank you for your time. Right, thank you. All right, we're, we're 0 for 2 on the timing, and that's okay. I, I want people to talk long. I just don't want to do it to the detriment of other people who won't get to speak. So just on that note, by a show of hands, can you raise your hand if you know you're going to speak tonight? All right, it's not that many, so we can be a little more lax with the time. Uh, we're already sitting, so come back after everyone else, okay? Maureen Baskin, 419 Halls Lane. I'm actually reading this on behalf of my husband who's not here. Um, he did send it to you guys earlier. I'm not sure if you had a moment to read it, um, but he wanted to make sure that it was said at the meeting. 
Um, I write to you as a resident of Springfield Township in regards to the proposed resolution tonight regarding display of the thin blue line flag. I'm not writing as a supporter of it or, or in opposition of it. I'm writing as a citizen that concerns himself with government overreach and acting outside their power entrusted to them by the public under the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. The First Amendment of the Constitution guarantees freedom of speech and redress of grievances <coughs> with the government as does Article I, Section 7 of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Whether this flag is a sign of good or evil depends on one's opinion, but it is not the duty or responsibility of a government body to approve or censor speech, which brings us to the topic at hand. The township is well within its rights to deny the display by township employees in the course of their duties. What the township is not allowed to do is to suppress the speech of private citizens or prohibit the display of the flag on township owned property. The only exception will be recognized hate symbols, which the thin blue line flag is not. You can look on the Anti-Defamation League's webpage for a catalog of recognized hate symbols, and this is not listed anywhere. Speech and symbols can be offensive, but cannot be regulated by a governmental body. This was recently upheld in the Supreme Court of the United States decision of Shirtleft versus Boston um, with a decision that was rendered in May of 2022. This dealt with the city of Boston having three flagpoles. The first flagpole displayed the United States flag. The second pole displayed the Commonwealth of Massachusetts flag. The third pole normally displayed the flag of the city of Boston, but the city would allow flags from other nations, flags of private groups, flags representing first responder groups, et cetera, to be flown from time to time. The city of Boston denied a religious Christian group from display of their flag. This was ruled unconstitutional, not due to separation of church and state, but the Supreme Court of the United States ruled it, that it was protected First Amendment speech and their flag should have been displayed. In the court's opinion, they recognized symbols of hate could be suppressed, but not ones that were just considered offensive by some. They specifically mentioned the Confederate monuments and statues as items that could be banned. The Confederate flag is a recognized hate symbol by the Anti-Defamation League. However, again, the thin blue line flag is not. I know the township is, I know the township has allowed many different groups to affix their signs and symbols to township and property and or buildings. So with a decision of Shirtlift versus Boston, there are certain sections of the proposed resolution tonight that are clearly unconstitutional and protected First Amendment speech. Um, he goes on to list some of the ones that, um, he, he, that are unconstitutional, um, but I'm gonna, for time's sake, um, Get a little bit done here. With all these things in mind, um, he implores the Board of Commissioners not to adopt the resolution. Now, with what I said, I believe there are some actual solutions to the problem or perceived problem. First, instead of adopting a resolution that will open the township up to constitutional litigation, post the township work rules that are already in place on the township website. This step could be done tonight or tomorrow without any more public hearings that just seem to divide the community. The display by private citizens on township property whether on their person or affixed was upheld in that Supreme Court case. Second, bring more transparency about by posting the oath of office of our, of our police officers and commissioners on the same township website, which again, could be done immediately. Third, at a minimum, post the police department directives and or policies table of contents on the township website for transparency. Fourth and better yet, post the police department directives and their policies on the township website um, these, of course, the third and fourth steps might take longer, but anyway, fifth, form a community police relations committee that comprises the, maybe the chief of police or his designee, PBA representatives, community representatives, maybe a member or two of the board. The steps I've listed above will not satisfy all from both sides, but you never will. Furthermore, I believe this will actually bring about positive change instead of divisions within the community. I understand your job is tough, but it's your duty to honor the oath of your office. The steps I listed above recognize one side's concerns and apprehensions while protecting the constitutional rights of the others. Commissioners, uh Township folks, I thank you for your time. Um, 
not a man of many words. Sorry, can you state your name? Sure, address? John English, uh, 603 Bradford Road. Commissioners, it, it, it's, it's not so much the debate over whether or not this flag should exist. It was the language used in the resolution. Anyone here ever been accused of you know, or called a name or a racist term that really made them feel bad? Unfounded? Never? Nobody? Really? I, I have many a times, of course. Unfounded, just a nasty name or a, a racial slur. Or... So here's my concern. When you take something like the thin blue line logo, and you say, well, it doesn't apply to anything outside of the township. Well, it does. It applies to the entire community. When an officer is slain in a line of duty and my daughter it takes it upon herself to, to, to cut out a blue heart and put it in the window, and my son puts a thin blue stripe, my house is now targeted. I am looked upon, my family is looked upon as white supremacists. And to use that term so loosely in this society is disgusting. It's vile. These are the most vile people on earth. And this is what you're comparing people to. That who, who have uh, this, this, this. Tell me when white supremacists are all about cops and they want to support them and they have uh, thin blue stripes. I, I, I don't get it. And it's the language that was used in that bill that every one of you commissioners owes this township, black, white, Asian, I don't care what you are, an apology. It was horrendous. That is not the way you start a dialogue. That does nothing but create hate and anger in our community. And I'll finish with this. You do not confront hate with hate. Jane Thomas, E. Dan Road, Orland. Yes, dear. Um, now, just before I say anything, can you verify again or tell me what you think was the start of this flag and who did it? Ma'am, I'll refer to my opening comment where I laid that out pretty, pretty well. Um, so was that Andrew Jacob? Are you, I'm sorry, I thought you meant but the issue here. No, not the You're issue You're talking here. about the, the, the flag. Yes. Um, it rose to prominence around 2014, the American flag. But, but who, who did it? I don't know. If I remember it. correctly, Mr. Grant, Sounds familiar. Andrew Jacob? Yeah, it was. Okay. I did a little last minute um, homework. He's the president of the Thin Blue Line. Now he is. The flag, quote, the flag has no association with racism, hatred, or bigotry, unquote, he said. Quote, it's a flag to show support for law enforcement, no politics involved. The company officially disavowed its use in Charlottesville. It was not a direct reaction to the first Black Lives Matter protest, et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> so just to- May I ask a question? When was that quote made? Uh, I'm looking, but it was after. Yeah, it was after the formation, after he had left his group uh, when he first designed it and he saw that it was profitable to start. When he start first designed it, it was not designed. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought you wanted me to answer the question. My apologies. Go right ahead. Well, I wanted you to answer who did it. That, that was all. Okay. It was not designed as a white supremacist thing. Okay. Thank you. Hi, my name is Erin McCrossan. I live at on Flowertown Avenue in Winmore. The board has heard from me quite a bit on this, I know. Um, I'm one of the researchers that conducted the police community relations survey two years ago. The survey was conducted prior to this controversy about the PBA emblem. However, there are some relevant findings that can speak to the issue. I'm sorry, may I interrupt you for one second? Yeah. This is one of the sort of ground rules I should have said. For public comment, make sure you are addressing the, uh, the commissioners, commissioners. Not, okay. not the public. Sorry. Um, okay, so overall Springfield Township residents are satisfied with our police department. However, our African American neighbors are less satisfied and some in some cases do not trust our police department. In the open ended comments many residents, including many white residents 
um, said they would be re reluctant to call the police department because or report suspicious activity because they were afraid our police department would use excessive force or be discriminatory. Now, I'm not saying the, the survey cannot say whether this is or is not the actual case, right? We're talking about perceptions. But the reason perceptions matter is because the literature tells us when the public or groups of the public um, mistrust the police or believe the police to be um, unfair in their treatment, the job of policing is made harder. When residents are reluctant to call the police to report a crime that they have witnessed or experienced, that makes us all less safe. So we should all be concerned about these survey results. We should also be concerned when any of our residents ex express fear and mistrust based on an emblem that police officers wear or display. I would expect anyone who's concerned about improving the relationship between our police department and our township residents, which I would hope would be all of us, um, would therefore be concerned about wearing a symbol that many residents are saying leads to mistrust. Unfortunately, regardless of people's intentions, and I do believe most people have good intentions, um, it is how the message is received or interpreted that matters here. And the thin blue line flag, unfortunately, has become associated in many people's eyes with white supremacists and insurrectionists. And to be clear, I believe that any symbol that has become controversial or political simply has no place displayed by any township employee. The continued use of this symbol sends the wrong message to many residents, regardless of the intent. What is, re again, re what's relevant here is how it's being received. Our police department and our commissioners need to convey an expectation for all of our township employees that we are working towards unity, not division, and respect for all residents. I believe this resolution is a first step in doing so. Furthermore, my co-authors and I have long recommended third-party trained mediators to help facilitate dialogue between the police department and our affected residents, as well as an ad hoc commissioner committee to investigate how Springfield can strengthen its community policing model. This resolution is not a substitute for those recommendations, but it does create a more neutral space, as Susie has uh, mentioned, where productive dialogue might have a chance to succeed. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Eileen McCafferty DeFranco, and I live on Highland Avenue in Flowertown. When I was at the meeting on Monday, I didn't hear one word of disrespect uttered against the police. I did not hear one word of criticism or one word that besmirched their profession. What I did unfortunately hear at the meeting was a distinct lack of empathy, a failure to understand history, and I heard a lack of awareness of the realities that some of our neighbors have experienced because of the color of their skin. Things that happen to them that do not happen to us because of the color of our skin. I am new to Flower Town. I moved here two years ago from my hometown of Philadelphia, a city that was vilified by one of the speakers on Monday to be near my son. One year after moving here, my neighbor, two doors down from me, put up horribly anti-Semitic signs on his front lawn and refused to take them down even when asked. And when various members of the block tried to complain, we were told that it was free speech and he had a right to leave those signs up. And unfortunately they were there for three or four months. My daughter-in-law is Jewish and every time she came to visit us, she was forced to see these signs on my neighbor's yard. And so I would very humbly suggest that if our black neighbors, our neighbors who shop with us at the Acme, who shop with us at the Giant, who we might see in the post office or the Hallmark store or at the, at the farmer's market, if they tell us that the sign, the thin blue sign hurts them, I think that we should really listen to them. And like the good neighbors that we really think that we are, we should find some other way to honor the police. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm John Gleeter from uh, Garth Road. Uh, I've spoken a couple times. Uh, I spoke the other night. I just wanted to kind of clarify i don't think i got my point across coherently the other night so i wanted to kind of try it again 
We all really do. Um, I am a, a, in law enforcement. I have been most of my life. I was in the, I spent my entire adult life in service, whether it's police, fire, military, uh, that's who I am. So uh, that's what I'm going to start with. My problem with the resolution, other than the fact that I think a couple of people have said it, it seems redundant to me that if we've already got regulations that are being followed and the emblem isn't being worn or displayed on township property or uniforms. I don't know why we spent $20,000 of taxpayer money to get to this point where we have neighbors fighting with neighbors. This, this whole thing seems needless to me. I, and I, that's not to belittle people who think it's a racist symbol, but I just, I don't think we need to be here. I have a problem with the characterization of this particular symbol as it being in opposition to racial justice. I, I don't think that that's, and again, I'm not gonna argue about how it was created, who created it, I have no idea. I, I suspect that came from the internet somewhere and that's probably true, but it might not be true. I know from researching things that. A lot of times we really don't know. So, and I admittedly have no idea where the symbol came from. But what it does mean is it's support for the police. And I, as an officer, appreciate that. That's, you'll see officers display it. You see civilians display it. It means something to us. Uh, Law enforcement is a tough profession. And I often like kiddingly say there's two jobs in the world that every single person thinks they know how to do. One is a cop and the other one is a teacher. Everybody thinks, oh, I, I know how to do that. I went to school. I can, I can tell you how they should teach or I watch TV shows. I know how to be a cop. It's unless you've stood in the, in the shoes of a police officer, you really don't know what we go through. I've in 33 years, I've seen a lot of stuff that people shouldn't see. Uh, I'm not looking for sympathy or thanks or anything like that. I'm just throwing it out there that we deal with a lot of things. Uh, are there bad officers? Yeah, absolutely. There are bad officers. That's where this comes from. That's the, the BLM movement and this flag. It's not, the flag is not opposition to social justice or racial justice or opposition to BLM as much as it was support. It got big. I don't know why it was created, but you started to see it during all of the angst over the last few years over what is horrible incidents that should never happen. If there's one, it's one too many. But if you look at the big picture, it is a tiny, tiny percentage of the contacts between police and civilians that end in tragedy. It's, it's just not fact that it's an epidemic. And that's what it seemed like. And that's what I, I don't speak for every officer, but I know a lot of officers felt the way that I did, that it was being portrayed and whipped up into almost like when I get dressed in the morning and go to work, I think to myself walking out the door, who can I beat up today? Or maybe I, if I'm lucky, I can shoot and kill somebody. That's not, that's not how it works. Nobody, nobody goes to work wanting to kill anybody. There are, are there bad people? Yes. Is there excessive force at times? Yes. I'm not denying that. Is it a problem? Yes. Is Black Lives Matter an organization that has legitimate gripes concerns and issues 100%. That being said, I spent the summer, and again, in 33 years I've been doing this, it was the busiest summer I've ever had, having rocks and bottles thrown at me, being called names, watching buildings burn down that had people's apartments above them, stores looted, all kinds of stuff that went on under the color of BLM. Do I think that 
that's the norm for BLM? No, it absolutely is not. It 99 and 9 tenths percent of the people involved with the BLM movement are decent people with legitimate gripes. There was a small group of people who did horrible things under the color of that organization or name. I don't drive down the street in Springfield and see a, a neighbor sign that says Black Lives Matter and think to myself, you know, the guy that lives in that house is probably a cop hating rioter. And I, I know it's not true. My issue with this is you're essentially saying every time you see the thin blue line flag, that person's a racist. That's a white supremacist. You, yes, and I said it the other night, you saw that flag being displayed in Charlotte. You saw that flag on January 6th, and you probably saw it at any other number of rallies where people were displaying it that I certainly wish had nothing to do with us. But for whatever reason, they, they display that flag. That doesn't in and of itself make it a racist symbol. It's, that's just not the case. And I said it the other night, for every, you go home and you Google it, you look up videos and photos, you will see 15 regular American flags for every thin blue line flag at one of those uh, events. And we're not having this discussion about the American flag because we know the American flag is not a racist symbol. Although I'm sure there are people that will say that it is, but I, I'll, I'll argue that. Um, it's, it's beyond my comprehension how we, I'm saddened by the fact that we've gotten as a country and certainly in Springfield Township to the point where if you don't agree with me, you're my enemy and you need to be silenced. You need to just shut up. That's, that's not how we're, I was never raised that way. This, we, can, we can disagree. I have friends that are some of my best friends that politically could be more opposite to me than, than what we, but we're still friends. I, I still understand like this guy's a good guy. We just don't agree on certain things. That's, that's how this country works. That's how it's supposed to work. I don't, I don't know when we got to, to the point where we're calling each other names. We had, somebody posted something uh, that last Tuesday's meeting was a MAGA rally. I'm offended by that. I, you, if, you, if you know me, I'm not a, a MAGA person. I'm not a, a Trump supporter uh, because I support that that flag doesn't mean that it's a MAGA event. Are there people, and there may be people here that don't like I'm saying that because they're MAGA people, I don't know. I, and I really, it, it, to me, I don't care at the moment. The bottom line is, I, I don't think you're doing anything wrong. I think the characterization of this, it, it becomes a problem. It's a, it's a morale issue for police. And everybody says, oh, I support the police. And I heard people the other day that I love the police and I support the police. And then in the next breath, but if I saw a cop with the thin blue line flag, I'd be afraid to approach them. Why? Because you, you never spoke to us about it and you don't understand what we think it is. I heard it compared to uh, a Nazi, the Nazi emblem or the Confederate flag. It's not the same thing. The Nazi emblem, which was originally an ancient symbol that had good meanings got used by the Nazis. The difference between these two things is when the Nazis were using it, no one else was really using it. It, it was, I'll, I'll wrap it up. It, <laughs> but it, the difference being that the modern use of the swastika was strictly by the Nazis. It really wasn't used widely. This is not, this is an emblem that's the, the most prevalent of it is not a white supremacist. There, are there white supremacists using it? Yes. The bottom line is it's freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is created for offensive speech, for the fringes of society, things that we don't like. We don't need the law to protect things we all agree on. It's, and I took an oath and still to this day work to protect the right of people 
who say and do horrible things to me. I'll die defending someone's right to tell me that I'm a horrible person. That's, that's the bottom line. I don't know how we got where we are, but maybe we all need to sit down and have a discussion instead of doing what we're doing. And we probably could have avoided this, this entire last, what, year and a half of this if we would have just sat down and had a civil conversation between these groups. Okay. Thank That's you. it. Hello, everybody. Um, I was here a couple nights ago, and I think the tone that I took towards you guys were was inappropriate. Um, I don't think you guys are um, um, have any ill intent. I think you guys, uh, you know, took a step towards something. Might have been a little misguided, and it kind of got out of control. Um, but I do apologize because I didn't. To me, I think after I thought about it, I was like, you know what? It, to me, I think I took more of a personal, almost like a personal attack on you guys, and that's not what my intention was. Um, the gentleman that just, I just spoke, he, he's in law enforcement with 32 years-ish, something like that. I've been in, coming up on 22 years, and I, and I work with him. I've worked with him the entire time. I know officers that, like myself, we wear you know, shirts and pins and hats and wristbands with the thin blue line on it, uh, it looked like me. I'm the furthest away from white supremacists as you could be. So it was that also right there. A um, little, little background on myself, I'm, I'm not gonna be long. I, I wasn't born in this country, uh, from a third world country, I won't say where, but they would look at this stuff here and they would think this is silly. They really would. Where I grew up at, everyone is my complexion. When I was little, 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 my neighbors were Canadians. And there's pictures of me, and, you know, one, one and a half, two years old, we're in, you know, the tub together. And we used to joke around, oh, the little reverse Oreo, because I'm the little black kid in the middle, and there's these two white kids. They were twins, brother and sister. We still keep in contact today. They're in Canada still. So they're in Canada today. I'm here. I didn't really notice that there was a difference in between you know, blacks and whites until I came here. I was 12 years old. I really realized that there was that much of, you know, there was this big you know, thing. I mean, I read history books and we were taught you know, history, you know, but when they taught us about American history, you know, you know <laughs> where I grew up, everyone wanted to get here. Everyone wanted to get here, everyone. Everyone I knew wanted to get here, everyone. Because this was the, the, the land of the, any, everything is possible. This is the country, all right? We didn't talk about going to Europe. I didn't hear anyone talking about going to Canada. It was coming to the United States because you can do anything here, anything. This stuff here is divisive. I don't think you guys meant for it to be divisive, but it is. It's pitting neighbors against neighbors. I have clothing, you know, that have the thin blue line on. And I wear it because there's officers, like this gentleman here, who when I was in trouble, they weren't wondering, hey, what color was his skin? Is that a black officer, a white officer, Hispanic officer, Asian officer, or just an officer who needed assistance? And they're the ones who show up, everyone. If I, if I go to work and I, and I hit the radio and I say, I need help, everyone's coming. They're not looking, they're not thinking about what race that officer is, all right? That's what it actually means to officers who put, wear the, that article. That's what, you know, that's what it means to them when they see that. And I hear people talk and they come up here and they give the disclaimer first about how much they respect police and this, you shouldn't have to give that disclaimer. It should be a given, but respect is earned. It is earned. I treat everyone with respect. Everybody that I know, every officer I know. I met one officer in my 22 years who I thought this person doesn't deserve to be an officer. He's not an officer today because we got him out of there because we didn't feel that he deserves to be, to be wearing a uniform. Now, 
we're not, officers aren't perfect. No matter, it's the profession itself is not perfect. Are there flaws? Absolutely. Like officers say, absolutely. Are there work to be done? Absolutely. Are there bad officers? Absolutely. Every profession has people that should that have no business being in their profession. Law enforcement is one of those tough ones where, you know, we make a decision, you know, like a split, you know, split second decision and it's picked apart by people who have 20, 20 hindsight. And it's just, it's just the nature of, you know, law enforcement. You know, do I like it? No, of course not, but I understand. And just, it is what it is. But I, don't, I, I, I find it offensive when I hear people talk about when they see, you know, officers wearing, you know, you know, clothing or pins or wristbands, and it says thin blue line on it. And they automatically think that that officer is not safe to go talk to because that officer represents white supremacists or white supremacy anywhere. I find it offensive. I live in this, in this township. I didn't, I've only been here for a few years. But on my way coming and going, I've seen things. I've, I've called one night coming home, I, I called in two DUIs and they were both stopped and they were both arrested. But work is not, you know, the work is always evolving. We can always do better. But I would like, I would have wished that, you know, the officers that work in this township, the ones who protect your homes every night, the ones who are missing their soft, their kids' softball games, their kids' birthdays, their holidays, they're spending Thanksgiving in their car, they're spending Christmas in their car because they can't take off. They don't have the luxury of missing work. I wish they were in here. And I wish you guys could ask them, hey, what does this symbol mean to you? Because what it means to you guys actually doesn't matter because you're not in law enforcement. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm not saying it as an attack on anyone up here, okay? But you guys don't understand. It means something different to the people who, who wear it. I've been to countless officers' funerals over the years, countless, much more than I would, you know, than I wanted to do. You know, he, you know, he and I worked with quite a few officers who you know, got killed in the line of duty. That's, those, that symbol just represents the family that we have. Like some, I know officers who spend more time at work than at home. He's a detective still or something, but I know detectives who spend three, four days at home. I mean, at work, I'm sorry, at work, because the job is that demanding and they sacrifice a lot. And they don't care about the color of the person who they're serving. When you get a call to go to someone's house and someone needs help, we're not asking, hey, one, one, you know, what, what race is that person? We just go, we perform a duty. Sometimes it's ugly. Police work is ugly. It really is. I wish I could erase half the stuff that I've seen. You guys wouldn't be able to sleep if you saw all the stuff that I've seen. In my 22 years, in 32 years, I guarantee you, give you nightmares, but we do the job anyways. It's thankless. It's not about, you know, being, you know, hey, come, you know, someone come up and say, hey, you know, thank you for your service and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't feel good to be acknowledged. Of course it does, but that's not why we do it. I don't go to work for thank yous. I go to work because there's officers there who need me. Okay. They rely on me to be there. I command officers when I go to work. Um, they, they, they come to me and they ask me questions. And, and I have to, I have to guide, some of them are, I'm like, when I, was, when I joined the department, you weren't even born yet. You know, it, it, it's a hard job. So I wish some of these officers that are here that are working in this township, who I've seen on the streets when I'm coming home two, three o'clock in the morning and they're, they're driving around. Some of them look like the walking zombies, but they're still doing their job anyways. But you guys can sleep in your house is safe at night. I wish they were here for you to ask them hey, what this sign, what the symbol means to you. I don't like the wording of this resolution. I really don't. Talked about you know stuff on officer skin, and one of the, someone brought that up the other day, and I believe the response was, "What if it's a tattoo?" I would like cover it. <laughs> that's, that's insulting. It is. 
You're going to tell someone to cover up their tattoo of something that means something to them. Like I said, it doesn't matter what you think it means to you. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. It's what it matters to them. And for someone to come up here and insinuate that because they wear that, that they wear any kind of, whether it's a pin, a shirt, a hoodie, a jacket, a ring, a wristband, thin blue line on it, and automatically they think of white supremacy. That's a problem with that person, not with the person who's wearing it. We are individuals. I'm black, obviously. I don't like what people, I'm, I'm gonna wrap it up, I'm sorry. I'm black. I don't like what people, you know, you know, say, oh, I speak for, you know, all blacks or, you, know, you don't. I didn't give anybody the authority in this room to speak for me. I speak for myself, okay? I only chose to come up here now because I had to put my daughter to bed. So I just, I'm probably if I jump in front of everyone. But wrapping this up here, I believe the, the resolution was misguided, okay? I understand how some people feel about it, but that's not how officers take it. We wear it because we understand it as a brother and a sister, but we, we back each other up and we protect each other so we can all go home at the end of the night. And that's what's important. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Hey, sir. Sir, that just spoke. You come up. We just need your name. You just state your name and address. Oh, I don't sorry. think we got it in the beginning. We don't need the full address. Just yeah. the address and I'm over here on Glenway Road. Thank you. All right. You guys have a good one. Thank you. Hi, uh, Melanie me, Jim. Summer. I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to sorry, interrupt. Uh, just real quick, because we do have a couple, quite a bit of people online who are trying to participate. So just a reminder that if you are watching remotely, uh, we do not uh, offer online uh, ability to comment. Uh, if you wanna provide public comment, you have to email the commissioners or uh, make a, a public comment in person. Uh, and for those who do plan to go to the mic, uh, just a reminder, speak into the mic. Two minutes. That even though we, we might hear it here, uh, there's about 80 people online who also need to hear. So uh, thank you, sorry. That's fine. Hi, Melanie Summer, 12 Bysher Avenue, Flower Town. So clearly I'm a nurse. I grew up here in Springfield Township on Orland Mill Road. Left here when I was 17 to go to college, came back after 35 years because my mom wasn't doing well. Brought my beautiful son with me with the hopes that we would have a childhood that I had here in Springfield Township. Beautiful, small community. Everyone got along. People took care of each other. Police, you know, I was a teenager. Of course, I didn't like police. I hid from them. But, um, but we respected them. That's how we were raised. And so when I come back here, and just to be quite honest, um, on the way here, I said, Nick, do you want to go with me? And he said, I'm afraid. I said, why are you afraid? Well, if you say something or we're seen there, people are going to think we're racist if you say anything wrong. And I said, well, what's wrong? And he said, well, if you stand up for the police, I'm going to be called racist. That's how my poor 12 year old child feels. I don't like that. That's not how I was grow how I was born here. It's not how it's been. I'm a nurse. I do probably 60 IVs a day. Let me tell you, we all bleed red. Trust me, we do. And I love everybody. And I, my children, I have four beautiful boys, raise them to love everyone. This seems to me like a lot of overkill over a symbol. I understand if it upsets people. It, Hurts me that it upsets people. I don't want anyone to be upset. Can't we just love each other? What a beautiful town we live in. We have beautiful sports and beautiful children and we're fighting over something that to me is such a waste of our good community and our, and our minds and our spirits. And it just doesn't make any sense to me. I came back here for what it was. Maybe I was misguided, but I trust that y'all understand the only way to come together is to just love each other, man. It's just too, the town is too small. We need each other. The, the world is a harsh place. The world is a harsh place. We don't need a harsh place where we live, where we raise our children. Please just stop. That's all I want to say.
Bill Mahoney, uh, Friar Road, New Orleans. Um, my research on the uh, and the preamble to this resolution on the blue flag indicates that it represents the, the uh, men and women of law enforcement who stand in the gap between lawlessness and innocent. It was developed and displayed with good intentions, but they mentioned that groups like Black Lives Matter decided that's a racist symbol. Uh, what is your source in the uh, fourth statement to the preamble to this resolution supporting the statement that the thin blue line American flag has also come to represent opposition to racial justice movements. And my second question, which I direct to Commissioner Graham, is that when the issue regarding this blue line flag was first brought to your attention, why didn't you choose to bring representatives of the police department, the Belevin Association, and representatives of the police department together with the concerned township re residents so that a meaningful discussion of the flag's blue line could occur, be properly explained instead of tossing a grenade and continue to blame the volatile situation that you created with this resolution, with your clearly inappropriate Facebook post and other actions. Thank you. Okay. May, may I answer that? Oh, okay. I, I, wanna, I like to address that. Um, I can appreciate your thoughts. Um, I would challenge you to find any Facebook posting that I made uh, that said anything disparaging against our police department. As far as making sure um, that I included the police department and the Police Benevolent Association, I had a meeting where I got together uh, sociologists from the U of P. I got the Pennsylvania Human Relations Executive Director. I got um, sociologists, doctors, in order to address that issue, I invited the community, I invited the police department, I invited the Police Benevolent uh, Association, and I invited our police chief. I did do this under the auspices as the president of the NAACP, and they, were, they uh, at first said uh, they couldn't make it. I learned later that the chief of police could not make it because of a funeral, and I understood that. However, we asked that both all of those parties attend, they refused. I then also sent out an email asking for those same entities to have a statement sent to us in order that it could be read into the transcripts, transcripts of that recorded meeting. They both refused. So we still will like to make that offer to let you know exactly what this emblem, it's not the police department and it's not the individuals that protect their, my, our lives on a daily basis. And I think people don't realize that when I lived in Philadelphia, I was elected by Governor Rendell to serve on the first police advisory commission in Philadelphia. As a result of my advocacy to make sure that there was community policing, I was, uh, Promote, well, I was appointed as the chairman of the public information uh, committee on that police advisory committee. The first thing that I did for that committee is to make sure that they went to the training that each police officer went through at the, poli at the uh, Philadelphia Police Academy so that they could understand what each officer went through in each day of their lives. And when we went through the training, I think at that time, this was back in the 90s, it had a simulation. Every uh, committee person and every board, of the board member failed that uh, scenario where we had to walk up to a car that was sitting there uh, and you had to walk up and you didn't know if the person had a gun or not. It was a one was, I'll never forget, one was a lady with a, with a baby in the back and oh, officer, I'm so sorry. And then the next thing you know, she pulled out a gun and she shot it. And so I failed it. Um, there's pictures of it. I can show you that I did that. So the scenario, I don't know where the false rumor came about. Well, you know what? Actually, I can. Whenever people don't understand or they're nervous about any sort of dialect, of open dialect, and especially when it comes to dealing with people of color, they get a little nervous and they get apprehensive. And the person that brings that to their ire or to their attention raises their ire. 
And I, I will certainly accept all of that. I think through the training that my father gave me and that my ancestors went through, which is why I wear my hair this way, to honor that ancestry. And I'm just telling you that to let you know of the, my background in dealing with the police officer. My wife, who's sitting right there, her brother was an officer in the Philadelphia Police Department. My best friend is the, is a, the deputy uh, commissioner, retired, Myron Patterson, my closest friend. I have a lot of police officers in my life that are close personal friends and I respect them because I trust them with the lives of my family. So to say that Ed Graham hates police, that's not true. What Ed Graham doesn't like is this emblem that brought about the division when the, our community was going through so much stress from police killings of African-Americans then this gentleman who designed this flag purposefully designed it. And I'm being redundant because I've said this many times. Purposefully de designed it. Once it kicked off, excuse me, I'm getting back into my little uh, Ebonics there. But once his, once his company kicked off, then he disavowed himself from that white nationalist group that he designed with it. And then it was, oh, this, this flag represents police solidarity, which I am all about. So if a police officer designed this flag, I wouldn't have a word to say. And of course, everyone in this room would have a right, but it wasn't just me. This issue came out at least seven to eight months before I even noticed it by other members of our township. And let me just say this for the record, those were white members that said, hey, we don't want this sign in our field. So therefore, that is the, it's the emblem is what it was made for and what it was created for. And that's all I'm up against. So I just wanna make sure that's correct. And I hope that I answered your correct, your question. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. I don't think you really answered my question is that the effort that you've put into this resolution would have been better served if you would have put the effort into getting the people that you had trouble getting together earlier so they could discuss it and have a clear understanding. Okay. Uh, Mr. President, may I? Sure. I'm sure that Mr. Uh, our president, when this first came about, they said, well, Ed, this is troublesome. Let's have some meeting before this becomes public with the Police Benevolent Association. I think we met with them a number of times. How many times? About five, six times? When we met with them, officers of the Police Benevolent Association and our police officers came to this room right now. And we had a meaningful and not a productive, but we walked away with respect for each other. And we sat right in this room and we talked to them. And they said, well, you know what, Ed, I understand what you're saying. We're going to take this back to the Benevolent Committee because I don't have uh, the president of that at that time. I don't have the authority to change the emblem, but I'm going to bring it back to the Benevolent Association to see if they would change it. And they went back and they had a close vote, but they said no. They said they weren't going to change it. So we said, well, tell you what, how about we had a private donor that said, we know that there was a, it's going to be a cost for you guys to change that emblem because you had it on that. We got someone to donate $10,000 in the effort to change it to what everyone is saying tonight, the thin blue line, which is a black field. And I think people said it incorrectly tonight. It was actually uh, created back in World War I uh, when the soldiers were going over and they needed the support and solidarity. They said, we will help you pay for the changes on that thing. I mean, on that emblem, and they still refused. So we went through a year of hoping to change it. And by changing it, we was hoping to tell them that to people of color, this is a very, um, this is not an acceptable emblem because of where it originally came from. We understand what it morphed into. And I respect all of those police officers. But the same argument could be made for the Confederate flag, which was formed and written in uh, Norfolk, Virginia, when there was a succession of the Southern states 
from the United States of America. Some people to this day said, hey, that's not racist. It shows my heritage, but we know what it actually stands for. So that's the only thing that I've been saying from the beginning to the people of color, to the African-American community, because of where these flags, where this flag actually came at its beginning. That's why it's so important. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Jim. Let me ask you a follow-up question, Excuse Mr. Me. Graham. Why didn't you educate? Yes, sir. Okay. Why, instead of all the effort of trying to change a flag, why didn't you educate the people who did didn't understand what the flag was about? I did. I offer, I just said it. I, I just said. I had a meeting where I invited, I invited at, uh, many meetings, yeah, that's true, where we had experts to explain what the symbol meant to people of color. Uh, and I don't want to be redundant. And I'm just answering your question. You said we did. I did try to do that. This board can testify how many times I reached out. Now, did all of the members of the board agree with me? No, as a matter of fact, one or two members of this board made my association with this emblem so divisive that I can show you emails sent to me that threatened my life and my wife's life that I got today. I can show to you right now because of my advocacy for trying to get the community to understand this, I, have, I can show you right now where, as a matter of fact, I sent them to our president and to our township manager. My wife, who's sitting right there, I am nervous for her to walk out of the house by herself only because I'm saying, hey, this sign is divisive. And I see the heads and I, it's a real thing. Anyone that stands up for the rights of equality historically have been threatened, homes bombed, Life's taken. So I'll stand right here and I'll close this. I am ready to die as my ancestors did for to make sure that Springship, Springfield Township, the community that I love, I moved my family here and I raised my children here, but I'm willing to die for the equality and equitable treatment of all of its citizens. So the people, I don't know if you're watching tonight and seeing this, I hope that you can read that. Those threats that you sent me doesn't mean a thing to me. I am gonna always continue to fight for all of the people. And because I am an African-American, I am sensitive to the needs of my community. Thank you, Mr. President. Jim Griffin, 8806 Wayne White Road, Winmore. Yes, I'm uh, here as a concerned citizen. Also, I am a elected Springfield Township Constable, and I'm here to in fraternity with other fellow law enforcement, even though I realize all may not agree. So we are here about a thin blue line. To some, it is a pernicious symbol. To others, this is, could be an example of government's arbitrary bullying. I personally uh, have asked neighbors what they believe about the issue. Uh, most did not think it had any negative connotation, the symbol. Personally, I feel the same. I think to connote any negative motive to it is uh, a stretch, to say the least. I also think that relegating the symbol only to the basement clubhouse is also problematic. On the other hand, 
It is their self-selected symbol. I think trying to tinker with it and to say only if you do this, this, and this, that's also problematic. I would also remind the citizens and the commissioners that law enforcement police officers take an oath of duty and service. I, as a constable, do not take that oath, oath because I, I am not compelled to put my safety at risk. They do. That matters. So how do we resolve? I would ask the chair to pull the motion, pull it off the table without recrimination or malice, shake hands and move forward. If that's no longer possible, I would encourage the members to vote no on the resolution to ban the flag without recrimination and malice, shake hands and move forward. I believe this is not the time, the place, nor the issue for this conflict in Springfield. I thank the board for its time. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Michael Gottlieb. Uh, I'm an attorney. Uh, I represent uh, the majority of uh, the police officers in Montgomery County, except for Lower Marion Township and Norristown. In other words, I represent Lodge 14. Um, unfortunately, uh, many of our members weren't able to be here tonight because they're out doing what they do, protecting and serving, including your members of your department, who I believe probably wouldn't want to be here anyway for fear of recriminations. Now, in a prior life, I represented criminals. I don't represent criminals anymore. I do the odd DUI case, but I represent the police. And I enjoy representing the good guys and gals for a change. It's refreshing. And I have had the pleasure of being on the shooting range with a number of police officers whose departments allow them to come to the range on duty to practice. None of them have the thin blue line on their uniform. None, they don't have them on their hats. I, on the other hand, wear a, sh uh, wear a shirt that has back the blue. I have a thin blue line hat because I support the police. I don't support racism. And in fact, the um, Southern Poverty Law Center, uh, when discussing the issue with respect to white supremacy, uh, I was reading some of their paperwork more recently. And uh, I, mean, I mean, we all know they took down the Ku Klux Klan and they should be lauded for that, all right? Good for them. But one of the things that they say now is the white supremacists that they're dealing with, it's a white flag with a black X cross like this. Not a cross, but a, um, an X. That's white supremacy. What else do you see? The flag of the Army of Northern Virginia when it was originally created, which turned into the flag of the Confederacy. Uh, we also still see uh, repulsively the Nazi flag. I am part Jewish, so I'm particularly offended by that. However, we still have in this country a thing called the First Amendment, and that allows people to speak vilely if they choose to. It does not allow them to threaten somebody, as Mr. Graham indicated, uh, that he was threatened. And first, when he started speaking, I thought he said that Mr. Maxwell and Mr. Cobb were sending threatening emails to him. And he, he clarified that later on in what he said. And I do thank Mr. Graham for that, because I would have personally gone up and grabbed Mr. Maxwell and Max, Mr. Cobb by the collar and say, you don't threaten somebody, period, end of story. But let's talk about this um, Resolution, and I believe uh, I asked, I was, I couldn't remember who the township manager was, and I'd forgotten I had dealt with Mr. Taylor on some police matters. He's a township manager. Now, if memory serves me correctly, there's a sign not 30 or 40 feet from this entrance that's the police department uh, sign. Your shooting range is around a corner somewhere. But on page two at the top, prohibited, the publicly visible depiction of the thin blue line American flag symbol 
on any personal property of a township employee, agent or consultant, which is brought into the township building in which, in the reasonable opinion of the township manager, that right now would be Mr. Taylor, is placed in a location likely to be seen by a member of the public while visiting the township building. So if every one of the police officers in this township, except for the command staff, who I believe serves at the pleasure of the uh, commissioners, I think that would be the chief and the lieutenant only, um, if they come walking in here wearing that PBA shirt, they're gonna be subject to the second look, if you will, by Mr. Taylor. And notwithstanding uh, Mr. Lee indicating on Monday that this isn't designed to attack the PBA, it is because they're wearing a thin blue line shirt. And some of the people in here, I believe are wearing thin blue line shirts. I don't know if there's anybody here from the PBA, if they are, they're undercover, smart to be, but their polo shirt clearly has a thin blue line American flag on it. Now, who else do I represent? I also represented the plaintiffs who sued the Pensbury School District for violating the, their constituents' First Amendment rights. We received, ultimately, after obtaining a um, preliminary injunction uh, from Judge Prater in the U.S. District Court for Eastern District of Pennsylvania, we received a settlement of $350,000 that were pay, that was paid out not to the plaintiffs, but to we lawyers. The plaintiffs received $17.91, which was their request, because that was the... Um, that was the year that the First Amendment was ratified. This violates the First Amendment. There are no police departments in this county that use the thin blue line flag on their uniform, and there's no municipalities that have the thin blue line flag on their police vehicles. Your resolution is a waste of everybody's time here, I mean, we could be attacking other symbols. There's a gentleman here who wears a hat like I do when I go to the range, the uh, Gadsden flag, and I don't mean to call him out, but there was a time when people, I'm gonna move this if you don't mind. There was a time when people were saying, oh, that sign is divisive. The flag is not, I've been flying it for 30 years at my home along with the thin blue line flag. And that flag was flown and the Revolutionary War in support of the colonists, not the, not the loyalists. My house has been targeted because I support the police. I proudly fly a thin blue line American flag right next to my American flag on my home. I will forever do so. And if this persists here in this municipality, I have no doubt that we will be receiving constant requests from police officers in your municipality to sue the township and to deal, deal with First Amendment violations in federal court. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. The next, yeah. Really fast. Uh, I'd just like to address that gentleman's statement. First of all, um, in your opening statement, you stated that I named Mr. Cobb and Mr. Maxwell as making those statements. I did not say that in no, my sir, opening I, I statement, but I am glad that you did identify the persons and people, the, the people on the board that did make those statements. So for the record, I did not say their names, you did. I wasn't Secondly, you, sir. You said- I didn't say I, I was a threat, sir. All I said was you? about I did the not, sir. You're, 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 missing, right. you're, missing, you're misinterpreting what I'm saying, sir. <laughs> Secondly of all, uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center does identify uh, the thin blue line as a hate symbol. When was that done, sir? Uh, this was Last done, week or last month? No, it was actually done, if you give me a minute, it was actually done in, hold on, I had it right here. Ah, I'm sorry. January the 29th of 2021. Was that in response to the uh, Black Lives Matter movement in Chicago? No, it was actually frozen in ice response. Ice bottles at the Chicago Police Department? No, sir. It was actually done after the insurrection. Good. I'm fine. Thank you. I just wanted the, um, those corrections for yeah. the record. 
And just one point of clarity from what the gentleman said too, um, if, if anyone walked in here in their free time wearing this symbol, this, this does not affect that. Um, exactly. Thank you. Sir. It says right in here, it does. It does not say that. Okay, go right ahead. I'll double check. Good evening. My name is Lauren Camper and I live on Bradford Road in Orland. I wanted to again lend my support for the Board of Commissioners adopting the proposed resolution regarding use of the thin blue line flag. I was in attendance on Monday night and was exhausted by hearing the same comments of you don't support the police and you are dividing the community. First, I would implore my fellow residents to ask themselves if we could be so easily divided over a symbol, then how united were we? I would argue that ever since the disgrace twice impeached former president of the United States took office, that's when we started to divide as a community. Since then, we've been, div been divided on masks, vaccines, curriculum, in person vir versus virtual learning, policing, and now a flag. Secondly, many have voiced that police officers have a right to wear this emblem. And I'm pretty sure if we polled the room, the same individuals who think officers have a First Amendment right to wear this emblem at work also felt Mr. Kaepernick didn't have a First Amendment right to kneel while he was at work. Third, there was a gentleman on Monday who expressed that he, as a white man, has never experienced racism in Springfield. I wish my children could say the same. My 17 year old has been called the N word by a group of white children while he was playing at Erdenheim Elementary School. He's also been told by an opponent while playing ice hockey to go back to picking cotton. My 11 year old just last summer while playing a video game with one of his friends was called the N word and his white friend told him he was allowed to use that word because white people invented it. He was also told when he was eight White people go to college to get more knowledge. Black people go to Mars because they are behind bars. And when he was five, one of his friends told him that he was brown because someone pooped on him. My children have experienced more racism in their short lives than I have in my entire life. And for the privileged in this room who are tired of hearing how we feel and think we should just get over it, when the school board votes to allow teachers to read a book that you disagree with, or when this commissioner's board votes on a resolution to ban an emblem, which you don't agree with, I hope you can easily just get over it. Some in this room have come to school board meetings and voiced concern in an effort to hold teachers, admin, and board accountable for the education our children receive, as we should as taxpayers in this community. But why don't we have the same right to hold police officers accountable? Policing is a chosen profession, just like teaching. And teaching has arguably become dangerous and deadly in some cases. If I can hold the people accountable who I entrust with my children, why wouldn't I hold the individuals accountable who swore to protect and serve me? I can hold individuals accountable, ask questions, and even voice a concern while still maintaining the utmost level of respect. And I think that fact has been lost in this conversation. Nonetheless, I agree with the suggestion made by free residents on Monday night and in particularly this evening, the gentleman in the back corner, I know we're not supposed to talk to residents, but everything he said resonated with me. Everything he said resonated with me as, people, as two of us who are probably on different sides of this argument. I really appreciate everything that this gentleman said tonight. And we do need to come together as a community and not only talk to one another, but actively listen. It starts by having one common place of understanding to start to build from and being committed to doing to work. And as the commissioner board, I hope you will hold our police chief and officers accountable to speaking to us as residents. There have been several instances where residents have reached out to our officers or to Chief Pitco without a reply. A group of elementary students went online and researched our officers, wrote them letters about themselves, and then asked them, could they write them back, telling them all about their jobs as police officers. And to my knowledge, because my child was one of them, they never received a reply. The NAACP youth leaders repeatedly emailed and asked to meet with Chief Pickup to discuss bettering the relationship between children in our community and police. 
They went weeks and months before getting any actionable reply. And finally, the chief and president of the PBA were asked to meet with residents of color to discuss this very issue and they declined. So if you want real change and real reform, all parties need to be active and willing participants to come to the table. Thank you. Hello everyone, MJ Bonham I'm from Winmore. Um, I'm what you would call a baby cop. I don't have nearly the years of experience like the gentleman in the back did. Um, I became a cop in one of the most, probably the worst times to become a cop, right before the pandemic and everything shut down. And what I saw in the summer of 2020 will stick with me for the rest of my life. Seeing the sky red over top of Philadelphia, there's nothing like that, nothing like that. And I really wish that didn't happen. Um, I really wish that I haven't seen half the things that I've had to see in my almost five years. My best friend, is a cop in one of the worst townships to be a cop in. She marched with the Black Lives Matter parade that went through her township. She still wears one of these bracelets. She still wears thin blue lines. Why? Because it's a symbol of brother and sisterhood. It's something that brings us as police closer together. And I really wish that people could see that. Um, I wear one because of the people that we lost. Brad Fox, Ryan Allen, Steve Plum, Trooper Siska, countless others. And I really just think we need to come together as a whole township and just let bygones be bygones. I understand where some people come from, but I still respect their opinion. I'm not going to not come and help them if they need it. I mean, their kids go to school with my children, so. Thank you. Thank you. Um, point on the last, the last comment, Mr. Gottlieb, you don't have to come up, but uh, we are gonna add a little language that makes it clear that's while on official duty. It's not an ordinance. It's not, it's not an ordinance. ordinance. Hi, good evening, Angelina Banks. I live in Winmore, PA. So here we are again, still discussing this a year and a half later, tens of thousands of taxpayer dollars later. As a resident and community member, a tax paying investor into this township, I am publicly stating my opposition to resolution 1592. Not too long ago, at a recent meeting in front of this very body, it was stated by one of these commissioners that it is not the role of this board to socially engineer opinion or behavior through resolutions, ordinances, or any other legislation. Yet still, here we are. What started out as a conversation between this body and the PBA regarding their logo, which turned into, as Commissioner Graham mentioned, a $10,000 offer to adjust their logo, which devolved into this body threatening legal action against private citizens and a non-affiliated private group, now has evolved into limiting rights of all township employees, not just those in the PBA, an attack on their First Amendment rights, personal freedom, and expression. In such a diverse and tolerant and inclusive community as Springfield Township, oppressing any expression of personal freedom confounds me. With this continued course of action, this township is essentially communicating to me that my personal judgment, that my own perception, and those who think like me are wrong, that my judgment is not to be trusted, and that I must rely on a government entity to tell me what and how to think, that my moral compass is faulty, and that I just don't see. I just don't see that this symbol is racist, and if I don't get it, I must be racist myself. 
It almost reminds me of a children's story. You guys know the one where the elites of a town tried to convince others of how fine the emperor's new clothes are. And if they couldn't see it, well, we know how that story ends. This body has made it clear to me that my opinions, thoughts, feelings on community matters, included, including, but not limited to this issue, are not important, are not valid, and do not hold water. There will be differences of opinion until the end of time, but it is not the purview of this body to socially engineer a preferred opinion, especially when it restricts oppress and oppresses a private citizen's right of expression. Additionally, the hostile work environment that this creates for township employees who would like to support the police is unacceptable, creating an atmosphere of legitimate fear to be their authentic self at work for fear of retaliation, loss of job, or anything else that would be negative in their experience. I implore you to quiet the cacophony of inferred slight perceived racism and listen to your constituency, all of us, not just those you agree with. All of your neighbors who have been consistently showing up for the last year and a half to speak words of support of our police, our community, in support of the thin blue flag, which I think my first experience with it was actually in the wake of September 11th. And I've stated publicly before this board that the symbol that I wear on my chest is one of strength, honor, commitment, loyalty. I am here. We are here yet again to respectfully request that you take this resolution out of consideration, shelve it, and get back to the business of ensuring the prosperity of this township. I also ask for the insightful and divisive rhetoric on social media to end. For anyone on either side to call, to blanketly call a group of people racist is unacceptable and shameful. And to ring a bell and to call all, Afri all African Americans to feel a certain way to be offended is completely inappropriate. You want something to be outraged about? How about the huge cuts in fundings to HBCUs? What about abortion? What about the misappropriation of millions of dollars that BLM collected? I'm exhausted personally of this ongoing discussion. I'm exhausted for having to defend my opinion. I'm exhausted for the attacks on my personal family, my house, my property. I mean, just within the last two weeks, we had uh, our car was stolen from my driveway. And my first thought wasn't anything racial. I called 911 and they were there and they were there to serve me. And thank goodness we got our car back. We live in a really unique place. And a lot of the issues that face some of our neighbors and neighboring cities, townships and counties, we don't face in Springfield Township. And I really feel like um, this resolution has created more divisiveness in the last year and a half than previously existed. So once again, I ask you to um, take this resolution out of consideration and uh, let's get back to the, the real business in our township. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Donna Graham. I live on Quill Lane, Wallen. I'm Ed Graham is my husband. There's some comments I just want to uh, make. I've spent the last 38 years working for the Department of Defense as a manager, supporting military officers, your children, your family members, sending them medicine, food, force protection for the past, you know, for the past 38 years. Folks like me are behind the scenes doing that job. What I will tell you is that the Department of Defense, if there's any, anything that offensive clothing wise in the office place, it's not allowed. We, <laughs> we were employees, I was an employee. You cannot, if, if my neighbor was, my coworker was offended by anything that I might've worn, they could not wear it. They, there was a strict code of ethics and conduct, and it was, it, it, and we had to follow. It. So, as employees of this township, this board is obligated to enforce the code of ethics and conduct. And if if one of them is that it is offensive to anyone that uh, the thin blue line, wearing the thin blue line, then it should not be worn in the workplace. What you do in your private lives are your private lives. But as an employee, you must follow employee rules. 
at the Abington Hospital. I see some nurses in the room. You wear your uniform as Abington dictates. Nothing different from that. Therefore, as an employee of this township, they are obligated to enforce the rules. If anyone is offended, then you, you compromise, the compromise is that you can't wear that at the workplace. You can't do that at the workplace. You can't take out your political actions at the workplace. There's a Hatch Act that we follow as government employees that I followed the, for 38 years. When my husband was running for office, we could not hold fundraisers at my home because of the Hatch Act. I had no choice in that matter unless I wanted to leave my job. So I'm hearing a lot of things here, but as an employees, we all have to follow employees code of standards and ethics. We have no choice in that matter. Otherwise, otherwise we step Mr. away Chair, from, I'm sorry. Minute, sorry. We step away from our jobs. And that, that's, that's basically what I wanted to say. And in addition to that, we totally 100% at the Grand household support our Springfield policemen. They reach in our door when I come to the door to take the packet that you all send, to, send out for these meetings. They reach in the door and rub my, the policeman reach in the door, rub my big puppy's head. There's no problem at the Grand household with the police department. Thank you. Feels like it's been a while. <laughs> it's only been like five minutes. I just want to make sure everybody else had a chance. Anybody want to go before me? All right. Chapter two. <clears throat> Sorry. I um, got to figure out where I was. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here. Do I have to say my name again? Nope. Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just get to it. That said. I have no doubt that everyone speaking out against the resolution feels like they are being attacked or that the police are being attacked. But everyone who spoke in support of the resolution also spoke of their support of the police and continue to express support for the police officers. This is not about support for the police or the PBA. It is about the community and supporting the community, the entire community. Even perpetuating an idea that we don't support the police at this point is a blatant lie. While symbols mean different things to different people, and we've heard that a lot tonight, it should be obvious that this resolution is simply the current option being used to address failed attempts to encourage the PBA to make changes to their logo. It isn't much, but it is symbolic and it's something. All right, now this is getting long-winded, I know. <clears throat> even for chapter two, uh, but please bear with me. If someone walked in here tonight, and seriously, bear with me here, to address the board wearing a shirt with the letters ACAB on it, I think many of us would have an overwhelmingly negative reaction to the shirt and the person wearing it, including myself. We would probably judge them pretty harshly. Some here now may not know what ACAB means, but it has come it has been around in several forms for a long time, decades. It is typically viewed as an anti-police slogan, and it is both ugly and a lie. The problem is we don't know this person wearing this shirt, this hypothetical person wearing this hypothetical shirt, and we don't know what it means to them, only what it means to us. <clears throat> and it is so ugly to us that we really don't care what it means to them, and we probably never will. Well, let's imagine that it turns out that this person is new to the township, they moved from New Zealand in the last year after retiring from a long career in radio where they worked for a station under the umbrella of the Association of Community Access Broadcasters, also known as the ACAB. This newcomer, and that's not made up, this newcomer to the township is wearing an old shirt since the Association of Community Access Broadcasters, also known as the ACAB, went and changed their name to the Community Access Media Alliance, known as CAMA. I'm not going to pretend that I know why they changed their name because I don't, but in this scenario, I can at least explain why this person has such a hateful message on their shirt. 
Well, it's hateful, for, hateful to me, but it turns out that it means something completely different to them. For those of you still listening, instead of shaking your heads and repeating wrong, 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 or what the hell is he even talking about? <clears throat> fellow members of Springfield, our neighbors <clears throat> who we love and care for have informed us that the version of the blue line superimposed onto a black and white likeness, likeness of our nation's flag sends a very negative message to them. And we as an entire community should listen and we should care. We should do this because it is what is right. We are in one community. This includes everyone who lives here, as well as those who work here, residents or not. Everyone should feel welcome and part of this community. But we are not treating each other well at this moment. We are lacking mutual respect. This is shown by the way we act towards each other, as well as the symbols we identify ourselves with. So the commissioners, please pass this resolution and let all of your constituents know that you are listening to their pain. And to the PBA and our brothers and sisters who choose to serve the community on the police force, and thank you for that. Why isn't the classic thin blue line symbol or even the badge itself enough to show that you support one another? What is the need to dig in and insist on using a version that divides? If your response to this is that the flag in question does not mean something negative to you, then you are choosing not to listen and not to understand, choosing. You are choosing not to use better alternatives for a reason that does not look good. It should be clear to you by now how it makes you look. Do you really want that? Thank you for your time. Good night. Good evening. My name is uh, Ray McMahon. I'm a uh, retired s sergeant from the Springfield Police. And I, as a disclaimer, I don't profess to speak for them. I speak only for myself. Um, once again, I find myself coming before this board and what I've discovered is an issue with no fair answer. The situation founded in innuendo and fictitious claims has gone on for nearly one and a half years. I submit to you that the Springfield PBA chose this emblem out of respect for the Thin Blue Line organization, a group that has existed for over 100 years. I further submit that no officer in the Springfield PBA is affiliated with any right-wing fringe group, and this emblem was adopted without any intent to injure or harm anyone. I would challenge anyone with facts that refute those statements to come forward. The efforts of some have been about conjecture and character assassination. I have previously said that the board should not have been involved in this matter, and I continue to, to say that. I left here Monday night, and I was, and, and since that time, I, I've thought about this situation, and I'm deeply disturbed. There is a tremendous division that it seems to be growing, and it, and it, I thought about this, and I kept thinking, well, you know, I say something and everyone turns me off and someone else says something and I kind of turn them off. So uh, I kind of had these ideas and this is what I formulated. Some talk about understanding feelings and then call me names for asking me to understand theirs. Or under, I'm sorry, understand mine. Some talk about free speech, but attack me when my free speech does not align with theirs. Some talk of acceptance of who and what you are and then dismiss who and what I am. Some talk of not being judgmental, then judge me on the basis of my stance on one topic. Some tell me that a sign offends you, but have, you have no concern that a sign that you display may offend me. Some would hold me to a standard that you would say is unfair if I applied that standard to you. If we can identify with any of these things, if we do a self-examination and say, yeah, uh, I, I, I kind of agree with one or two or three of those things or any of them, then we can do better. We have to do better. We are in dire need of leadership in this country. Those that see a problem get, and get together and solve it, that's a leader. Leaders that do not seek personal fame nor accolades 
leaders whose actions bring us together for a common good for all. True leaders have no time for finger pointing, unfounded accusations, and villainization. Their energies are directed to positive and productive avenues. I would challenge the commissioners right now, and my position is lead us, follow us, or get out of our way. To that woman, I, I know I'm not supposed to address her, to the woman whose children are subjected to those things, I am deeply offended. I, I offer her the, my most sincere apologies that this kind of thing should not happen in Springfield. But then I ask you this, how is doing away with this emblem or how is attacking this emblem or how is this resolution gonna fix her children's problem? You... If, if I may, I, I think there should be a clarification. I am in full support of the thin blue line which African-Americans wore in the World War I on their uniforms. What the opposition is, is the Blue Lives Matter flag. So I think there needs to be a distinction. Thin blue line is a black field with a thin blue line showing solidarity for the soldiers that went to World War I. This Blue Lives Matter flag which is the American flag in black and white with a thin blue line is a divisive symbol to people of color. <laughs> so we just need to, we just admit, oh yeah, I, as a matter of fact, you are absolutely right. When I first spoke to the Police Benevolent Association, we offered to change all of their emblems and pay for it to the thin blue line because everyone keeps saying it's been around for a hundred of years, over a hundred years. You're absolutely right. It has been around for over a hundred years. The, thin, the Blue Lives Matter flag has not. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, just one more second. I think you and I are in alignment in terms of history. I said 1950s earlier, and I wasn't referring to the origin origin. I was, origin, I was um, referring to when it became popul popular. Yeah. In, in okay. LA and sort of in its current use of honoring specifically local police officers. Agreed. So, sir. Good evening. Um, how many Eagles fans here? Okay. I'm, I'm a Christian. Okay. I was brought up in the church and my sons are Eagle fans. I'm sorry, I don't... sir. Can you state your name and address? Oh, Jerome Roseboro. And I'm a Soltenham resident. Yeah, thank you. And please heard... address the board, not the, not the audience. Yes, sir. Thank you. And my point is this, I went through a lot of racist uh, situations. I come from Rock Hill, South Carolina. John Lewis got beat up protesting at the Woolworths in my hometown. There was nine of them, there's nine of us. My mother had nine of us. So this is a, you know, a similar uh, type uh, association that I'm bringing through. But nine people were put in jail and they put up a Confederate flag over Columbia, South Carolina, where my aunt taught school for 40 years. I come from educated background, teachers, um, lawyers. I'm an educated person. I got my degree from Maryland, Eastern Shore, which is a land grant HBCU. But Perception is reality. We all have our own perceptions, our own realities. All the Eagle fans, I, I support you because my sons root for the Eagles. I root for the player. I don't care what team he's playing with, okay? Because Michael Jordan got traded. Well, he didn't get traded, but he moved to a different. So I root for the player. Like I root for my law enforcement, my nephews, my brothers who I have two brothers. One was a retired Air Force uh, Sergeant and one is a retired uh, Marine. And both were born today. Perception is reality. What you receive is what you perceive. If I don't perceive a threat, I don't 
I don't harbor a threat. I have nothing but love in my heart for all my people. The paint, different color paint don't mean nothing. The lady said, we all bleed red. Okay. In the Bible, it says, on earth as it is in heaven. If we can't get along down here on earth, you think he wants us up there? You have no chance. My name is Johnson Carrick, Prior Road. Uh, I've never been to a board meeting till last Monday. I was invited by my buddy, my neighbor, and I knew nothing about what was going on. And I've been sitting here for two nights now. And I'm just gonna let you know, I grew up in North Philly in the Badlands. I always hear about white on black racism. But I'm gonna tell you right now, it was the opposite for me growing up. My dad left us when I was like about five years old, single mother, lived on 3900 Franklin Street, right around the corner from Ethan Butler that most people heard about. It was the drug capital of the world. I was one of three white families on the street. Okay. I fought my way back and forth to school, St. Veronica's. I was told every day that people hated me because I was white. Every day, every day, all my friends moved away. We were poor. I went to bed hungry. I had nothing. People of color would come up to me and tell me that their sneakers cost more than everything I had on me. Okay. So here in Springfield Township, where it's always perceived as racism is the other way, you have no idea. You, have, you haven't walked in my shoes. All right. I fought. Every person of every color, almost every week, going to and from school. And here I am in Springfield Township for over 30 years. I call it Maybury. Oh, no. When I grew up, you grew up, I, I was knocked off my bike three times, somebody trying to steal. Guess what? They didn't get it. I fought for my life. I had nothing. That was the only thing I had. You didn't leave your bike out in the front lawn like these people around here do. My bike, when I got had to go to the bathroom, my bike went in the front door with me and it went back out with me because that would have been going in a heartbeat. You didn't leave your skateboards. You didn't leave your sled. You didn't leave nothing laying around because it was gone. And they would kick your ass for it every day of the week. And if you show you were afraid of them, that was the end of you. You weren't making it. And I'm just leaving it right there. Hi, I'm uh, Kathy Breslin Polkrod, uh, 407 Central Avenue. Um, I, I, I just want to know why we're even having this discussion. I mean, I'm white, okay? And, and no one seems to understand that my parents, they bought a home in the 1950s. In, on their lease, on their deed, it said, couldn't sell to any person that had color, any pigment in their skin. So as a white person, I have to learn. I had to learn this. Like I'm still learning that my black and brown brothers and sisters have had to deal with whatever the man who was just here, who was called ugly or whatever he was called because he was white. That's one white person. Most of us have never, ever, ever felt the way one black person has in this room has felt. I just want to know, what do you feel is the right thing to do? I mean, do you see black people hurting, black and brown people hurting? I mean, or just even white people. There's white people here that are saying, this is wrong. I mean, it's clearly an issue. And I'm just glad we're talking now. I mean, I see there's lots of white people that just, I know, don't talk to us, but I have to. Because you're all, you're all well, brothers and sisters. Ma'am, we ma can't hear. That's the problem. We're all brothers and sisters, but we do have to get along. And all I know is generational wealth 
is an is, is something that we that white people don't even want to talk about. They, you know, they say, hey, I worked hard for everything. Black people want to take everything away from me. No, they don't. They just want equality, just equality. Now, I know I'm probably not making sense. I'm just blabbering, but it is how I feel. Am I making sense or no? You're doing great. Folks, Thank you. Can you please side, side chatter? Sunshine? No, um, I'm dead serious though, because I, I just I just think that it's getting uglier. And I think that you that we could all, you know, forget about this and talk to each other. And instead of saying, oh, you're a racist, he's this, Eddie's just trying to live his life without getting killed, right? I mean, because oh, yeah. of his skin. I mean, I mean, black and brown people, their lives are at risk when they leave the house in the morning. They go, they have to act white, okay? Act white, like, uh, oh, no, they do, honest to God. I mean, you can ask black people, black and brown people, they have to act like we think it's acceptable or otherwise we think they're acting odd. Pardon me? Please don't call out. Just... Oh, I wanted to answer a question because I do well, think we need to the, talk. You have the floor, go ahead. Oh, I have the floor. Okay, well, um, that's really what I wanted to say is I want white people, me, I'm like uh, I was in a coma for 60 years, I think is what happened. And so now that I woke up or I see, and I see that black people, brown people were not allowed to buy homes when my parents were. And, you know, uh, so there is an issue. I mean, I, I think we really need to just look at it. I mean, this is skin, just like the nurse said, biologically, there's no difference between Black people and white people, uh, whatever. I don't want to say any other ones because I just, you know, I don't know the proper terms. Thank you. Biologically, we are the same. We are being racist by not accepting other people. Okay. I mean, maybe I'm not making any sense to you. And Jeremy, it, does take, it takes a long time. It takes a long time to try to understand what it would, I mean, do you want, would you like to be born black? I mean, I ask white people that and they say, oh, well, I'm not black, I'm white. But really, if your skin was brown, it would be a totally different experience. That's all you need to know. I mean, I'm gonna leave it here. White people don't clap, don't anybody clap. I just want you to know how I feel and I want the world to change. And you guys right here can make a little change and make the world a little better place because we all are brothers and sisters. I mean, right? Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank hey, you. thanks. You want me to sing a song? No. <laughs> Nay. He said joking. <laughs> Peace and love. <laughs> Sir, my name is John Gross. I'm at 315 Camp Hill Road in Upper Dublin Township. For those of you not familiar with me, I've spent more than 42 years of my life in this police department here in Springfield Township. And to me, and for me, that was not a job. It was my career, it was my life. I devoted my life. I grew up in the volunteer fire company. And after coming here to work, I also spent my spare time, 15 years devoting time, answering calls with the Springfield Ambulance Association. I don't give a darn what your color is, what your race is, you know, what your religion is, or any other aspirations. If you need help, I'm there to help you. And I can't, ever remember a time where there was any racist incidents in this police department. This action here, as was stated Monday, just seems to be a, a solution looking for a problem. I would too, and just in the resolution itself, paragraph five, uh, five or uh, four, where it starts out, where is over time and partially, partially in negative response to the Black Lives Matter flag, the thin blue line flag has also come to represent opposition to racial justice movements, including Black Lives Matter cause. That's in my book, I find that highly offensive. And that just wording itself is very divisive. 
the fact that it's become a symbol of white supremacy, that's bogus too. That's a red herring. That is just, in my opinion, that this is just tantamount to council culture, council culture in action. This is how it's done. We don't like what a large group of people are saying, so we're going to shut them down. We're going to claim they're wrong, that you're just racist or whatever, just throwing stuff out there, hoping something's going to stick to the wall. Um, that's just, just akin to the Southern, Southern Poverty Law Center calling the Catholics a bunch of hate mongers because of their religion. Who set them up to decide what, you know, what label to put on people? Um, and also in the next paragraph, the American flag after its usurpation by white supremacist groups appears to express support for the systemic oppression of certain members of the township community. I really take effect, uh, uh, exception to that term. I hear that so many times as systemic racism. <clears throat> You don't have it in this township, in this police department. I can't tell you where you have it. That's systemic. Again, it's just a red herring. It's just a term thrown out there to incite, in, inflame people to get them worked up. This resolution is wrong. And I would ask, submit to your commissioners that you vote this down or take it off the, the board. Thank you very much for hearing me. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm, I'm two people tonight. I hope that's okay. Just be um, the first one first. I'll be the first one first. So I'm Kathy Trinkle. I live on Sycamore Lane in Flower Town. And a lot of people tonight talked that I could really resonate with, especially the guy from North Philadelphia where I grew up. Um, I grew up in a mixed neighborhood. Um, we had big white plate, so everybody left except my parents. So I was there, same thing. Um, but I went to Cook Junior High, used to get um, stabbed in the hallway, walking between classes um, with uh, whatever. <laughs> so anyway, it kind of brought back memories for me. But um, And I've also been a nurse for 40 some years for the University of Penn. And um, I've seen an awful lot. I've cared for a lot of people, all walks of life loved every minute of it, loved caring for people from all walks of life. I can tell you that I am not weight fragile, fragile, like he says. Um, I find that really offensive. I'm not a racist. Oh, I'm not a racist. Okay, whatever. You don't know me. Um, I'm a Christian, as that other gentleman stated. Anyway, I just want to say that I am not in support of this thing. And I also believe that the truth about January 6th is going to come out. It's not going to be called an insurrection because I find that offensive too. It's okay. The truth is going to come out. God is going to reveal everything what happened. It's okay. It's going to, anyway, that's besides the point. No, wait, everybody else could talk. Why can't I? Ma'am, you can absolutely talk. These I mean, number... seriously, why am I allowed to talk? Folks, and they are. folks, please give respect I mean, to the speaker. <laughs> I cannot believe this. Was that number two or was you still I, I another one? Yeah, I have something else I want to say, but I can't believe how much chatter I have behind me because I exposed some pornography at the school and I've been laughed about that for the past year and a half. Right? And I don't appreciate that. You don't like to be exposed. Ahead, I'm going to say one more thing about um, Mrs. Graham. She's right about what she said. Um, there was an article in the paper about the heartbeat. I put it up because I was like, a heartbeat. Do you know they made me take it down because it said heartbeat? Like, how is that offensive? Ma'am, can you please keep it to this topic? Sure. Anyway. Um, okay, so Madeline Watson, Cromwell Road, asked me to read something. I'm going to keep it, like, I'm going to not totally read all of it if, if Madeline doesn't mind. They are a mixed race couple, and so she wanted me to make a statement. Um, she says, we just want to thank... Sorry, Eddie Graham and the NAACP speaker for another speech encouraging more victim mentality while simultaneously bullying, 
threatening and slandering an entire private nonprofit charitable organization, as well as neighbors by calling them white supremacists, demanding they change their flag while BLM hangs everywhere and is extremely offensive to many. We are all the human race and we are all Americans. Stereotypes and divisiveness are everywhere, even profitable and many times intentional. I would rather have the freedom of speech and expression than cancel every single thing someone can't handle. Um, Mr. Graham claims to speak for unverified, countless black families who feel attacked, but you don't speak for my family or any black people, folks we know. Shame is the word for any board member who caves to the fragility of victim-seeking mindsets instead of the Constitution of the United States. So they do not back your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any comment? Do, 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 do. <laughs> Good evening. Lift it up. Uh, good? Mm -hmm. Good evening. Uh, Jim Daly, Pennant Road. Uh, I first want to compliment Commissioner Lee. Uh, I think you've given everybody a voice. I think everybody's had their say. Um, it's been going on about a year and a half. And you let everybody give their public comment. And I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Subtown. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Um, I appreciate the com the compliments to the police by you know the prank of tonight. I actually saw that as well, going back and forth to basketball. Um, my daughter's the same age as Neil's. Um, she had a, as we were driving by that scene, there was four police officers. Um, you could tell it was the DUI, um, and they really handled themselves professionally as they always do. My daughter said to me, "Dad, how many jail cells do we have?" As we were driving by. And I thought about it for a second. I said, and even though we built this building, <laughs> I think there's only one, right? Is there two? two. Is there two? I've never been in them. I don't know. Four. Four. Is there four? There you go. Four. We feel confident with four. <laughs> but we don't use them that much. I guess that's my whole point. And in this township, I hope we never have to. I'm sleeping there tonight. I <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's a testament to all the folks that came before you, after you, the residents, our police, and everybody. And we live in one community. Um, I'm not going to rehash, but you, you heard what I, my thoughts on the resolution the other night. Um, my, I do have a question about some of the timing because when we originally had the Back to Blue rally, that was 2020, in, in October of 2020, and not 2021 which I think has been talked about here is when these, the flags came about and the PBA symbol. In fact, the black to blue rally in 2020, um, October 12th, I believe it was, um, we took out a permit for it and it was a very nice event. And there was actually some counter protesters there. We had a great conversation. I was there. So the, the, the flag was there, the symbol was there. So I guess overall, maybe the conversation could have began back then as opposed to almost a year later. I guess that's where I'm a little confused with the timing. That's water over the bridge. Um, as a former commissioner and Glenn's in the back and Pete and uh, uh, Baird, um, we probably hired at least half to three quarters of the present force. We probably promoted quite a bit of those folks as well. We hired the chief of police. My concern going forward with the last year and a half is we always had great candidates. We always had top-notch candidates. I want candidates to want to come here and to be police officers here. And I want the top of the cream of the crop, whatever you want to call it. And I think you have a tough job to do, however you vote on the resolution tonight, to keep that. And perception, sir, is reality. And those in law enforcement, I can tell you for a fact, are starting to worry about coming to Springfield for jobs. Okay? And why? Why? Because of what's going on here. With some, and I, I don't get into arguments. Some stuff across the street. I was going to argue that. I, I'm just, I'm just saying that what we're doing here, I hope, does not make candidates not want to come here, and maybe go through a year and a half this if they join the PBA or whatnot. Um, so whatever you vote on the ordinance, I hope going forward we can all work together, and 
try and bring this together to keep this an attractive place for, for one folks to want to become police officers here. Um, you know, across the street, I, I want my, I want the police officers near the school. I want the kid children of the school to be acceptable to the police officers. Um, I, I, I want my kids to be safe over there. Um, but I think in the last year and a half, there's been a very somewhat anti-police movement. And I hope somehow we can rectify that. that that's my, my concern going forward because we have a great community and here from one side or the other side, we shouldn't have any side. We're, we're all together. I mean, we all want a good community. We all live in a great community. And um, I just think you have a tough job going forward after a year and a half um, to make sure that we continue to get good quality police officers. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. May I respond to that? Um, I just have to say that um, this is not, and, and it keeps being said that this is an anti-police movement. Nowhere in any of my comments, either publicly or on social media, stated that this was an anti-police movement. And therein, I think that's bringing up the divide. Just like a few years back with the defund the police, we never stated defund the police. That was never stated. It was the allocation of funds in order to bring in social workers to address people that were having mental breakdowns to have the police not be as aggressive toward those individuals that were having uh, unstable mental problems. So I, I wish people would stop saying that this is an anti-police rally or this is an anti-police movement because when you do that, that fuels, puts fuel to the fire. I think that makes people antagonistic to what we are trying to address. But I also have to be, say that being the first African-American on this board, bringing the perspective of African-American views is difficult. And especially in a township like Springfield and a township that I love. People keep saying that I don't like Springfield and I'm anti-police. If I felt that way, I wouldn't have moved here some 20 years ago. My children were raised here. My children had, my, as my wife stated earlier, we've had nothing, well, we've had a few interactions that were negative, but we've had nothing but good interactions with every police officer that delivers, our, that delivers this booklet to my home on a monthly basis. And they always interact, they are always polite, to my wife, to my son, to myself. Please, this is not an anti-police movement. This is just a, a asking you, which is where we started, a consideration from moving an emblem that is offensive to a certain body of people. And I think because we're only eight point, according to the last uh, survey, we're only 8.5% of this township, but hey, we would like to have a voice and be comfortable. That signage makes people of color uncomfortable. So please don't say it's about the anti-police. We're not anti-police. We just wish that they would consider changing this to the actual thin blue line emblem. That's it. That's it in a nutshell. If there was a, a Jewish sign, an anti-Jewish sign, we'd be in an uproar. If this was an anti-gay sign, we'd be in an uproar. This is a sign that people of color, and I don't speak, as has been said numerous, I don't speak for every black person in Springfield or Montgomery County. I am speaking to the large majority that call me for opinions, advice, and as a commissioner of color on this board. So let's stop, that's, that's a false narrative too. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. <clears throat> and perception is reality, which is exactly right, which is what the president was saying about the side comments that go. Excuse me, excuse me, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Ma'am, please stop calling out. Ma'am, right, don't say nothing. Please stop calling out. Thank you. You're welcome to go to the mic when it's available. 
Oh, she asked me to go outside and talk about it. Your wife just she did. She, me ma'am. To come outside and talk about what do you think that means? I know exactly what that means. Because it's coming from a black person, right? No. Ma'am. Oh. So you want to cut you? You so dead me. So what does come out? What does come outside and mean? Ma'am. Penny. What does come outside? Output? You're not going to talk to my wife that way. I did that. <laughs> what does come outside mean to you? What does it mean to you? Ma'am. 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 Please step. Please. Okay. You can come to the mic when you're ready. At first of all. Exactly. Thank you. And, and my apologies to the board and to the uh, public for my outburst. Um, I, I took that. I took that as a personal. Ma'am, I've asked you several call. times to stop calling out. I'm going to have to have to ask you to remove if it happens again, please. I don't want to do that. I want I want everyone to be heard, please. Thank you. So I don't want to take too much time because we just keep going around in circles. But I just had a question. My name is Leah. I live on Stotesbury Avenue in Winmore. Uh, so just a quick question: uh, Is the emblem used? by police or PBAs in any other township in the area? No. So why here? Uh, th there is, just to clarify, there is no doubt that this symbol, speci again, spe very specific to the striped American flag uh, variation, is very popular, okay? It's all over. A lot of places, you see a lot of places, there are even police departments that have it as part of their um, official signage. Uh, I think Montgomery County is really rare. Um, I do know a township in Delaware County that has some variation on their car, but um, I don't know the full extent of it. I mean, we've done some research and it's some places, uh, but um, you know, as, as we talked about a lot, there are police departments that are not named Springfield that have banned its use in a very similar way for the very similar reasons. So, um, so this is not a debate that is unique uh, to Springfield or started here, uh, but it is very popular. I get that. And as we've, most of us have said all the time, we understand the, you know, people have their view what it means and you've never heard me tell you you're wrong, how you feel about it. Um, but you have heard me say, you know, I just want you to open up to, what it may mean for other people they didn't think of. So, uh, sir. Yeah. My name's Chris Tilstra. I live on Drayton Road. I've been a resident of Springfield Township my whole life. So been here for 36 years. Um, I've actually lived in every single town in Springfield Township. Um, Mr. Graham, everything that you just said, I believe you, everything you just said, defending that this is not an anti-police movement. All your arguments are the exact same arguments that everybody else has said about how this is not a racist symbol. Intent has to be there for it to be a racist symbol. And the intent is just not there. I get that you can, everybody can perceive offense. We've done this tonight. We basically just had a childish argument tonight True. about perceived offense and everybody's tensions are high, but you basically just made the argument for the PBA and all of your defense of I'm not anti-police, every argument you just made is what they've been saying about how this symbol's not racist. It's this, you guys basically quoted each other this argument is stupid. My 14 year old niece has less childish arguments than we've been having tonight. We need to just be the adults that we are and stop it. You've also just kind of led or basically said that you're the police department's boss. You guys hire them, you promote them. You recommend if they get need to get fired and you're telling them what they can and can't do in their private lives as part of the PBA. That is their private portion of their life. And they are members of this police department. That would be like, if my boss said I couldn't be a fireman, 
it's exactly that. You're trying to change their logo and you're trying to create a resolution that says you can't have this logo here at all. It's not your purview. This it's free speech cannot be dampened by government. You guys are government. It is the only thing that that's protected by. It's not protected. Free speech is not protected against private organizations or private hirings, but you are a government entity. You can't dampen down somebody's free speech. You can be offended by it and we can have that conversation, but you can't tell them they can't do it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Um, just one point of clarity again, I do wanna make very, very clear that this resolution does not restrict the PBA's use of their current logo, it just does not. Um, um, when, when they're on duty in the township building, fixed on township property. Uh, but we were very careful. We listened to the feedback last month. We listened to a lot of good questions uh, on Monday night. And we, we were very careful and intentional to really narrow the scope of what is in our purview. And we believe that it is, uh, and not to put any restriction on the PBA use, including any member of the PBA who walks in this building off duty and is wearing it. Now that may not go far enough for a lot of people, but that's where we felt comfortable uh, making our statement. So, and the other, the other thing I would just push back on, you referred to it as a stupid argument. You may disagree with the argument. Um, I would reject that it's a stupid argument. I didn't say stupid as a challenge. No, you said stupid. You said stupid. Silly, stupid, but that's okay. Right. Okay, but I'm just, hey, look, you're entitled to your opinion. And if you meant silly, uh, it's a little better maybe, but, um, if it's, if it's really important to a lot of people, even if you don't agree, um, as a body, as a government, I think it's important to have the discussion. Even if you think it's wasteful uh, and, and not worthwhile, I just would say that it's not stupid, no matter. And, and I would add to that and just say, this conversation, there's gonna have some really good things come out of it, no matter what happens. Maybe there's some, some angst, heard and used that word myself today a lot, um, but there's going to be, a, you know, good that comes from good faith disagreements and really tough conversations. I mean, I agree with that. I think there's a lot of good conversations that would come about. I mean, outside of this, I would love to sit down with any one of you and have a conversation and just talk and have coffee. But I do have a question just for clarification purposes. So bracelets like my own, it's just the thin blue line mm -hmm. it's not the flag correct are the police allowed to wear that well Maybe. as this ordinance does not address anything that's not the american flag variation that is of controversy so they may not be able to wear that on their uniform regardless of what it is uh, if it's not part of their uniform um, and i will defer to staff to go into that but yeah i don't know what their policies are i know mine say that right. you can wear a singular bracelet and I choose to wear this for my brothers and sisters. Right, so we're not changing lost. whatever is in place for that. We're not changing it. We that's are, not the flag. That's the thin blue. That's correct, the correct. actual thin blue. Line. We are very narrowly, very specifically. Okay, because it says two different things on here. It says thin blue line at the top, and then it, it transitions well, we, yes, into we flag. If after. we define in the use of this document, we define it as the striped American flag variation. Okay. So when you see it later. It's referring to that definition. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm a public speaker. I'm you a public great. servant. So. You did great. <laughs> um, so other township employees, say public works, if they have a thin blue line flag on their car, are they going to get in trouble for that? On their personal car? We're on not personal addressing car? anyone's personal vehicle. We are only addressing uh, employees while they're on duty or working. Uh, or on their uniform. Okay, basically. thank you. Or township, township properties slash vehicles. Right. Yes. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Almost had it. Rob from Erdenheim, again, hope you understand why. It isn't a secret. For most of you that know me, um, 
and the commissioners that know me, I, uh, I do work for Springfield Township Police. I'm one of the current detectives here. And I'm also a township president. Um, I don't have a hard time sharing that at this point. Um, I haven't come to many meetings like this because just because of what I do here and feel like I should never mix anything. Um, but as a township resident, you know, I've met most of you. Now I was hired in 2008. So some of you were not on the board as of yet. Um, but we've had <clears throat> lovely conversations with numerous people here. Um, Eddie, we've had great conversations. Don, Mike, Maxwell, Baird, I used to enjoy watching your pugs when I dropped off the mail. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we've had great interactions and you're, you're in a tough position. Definitely one I wouldn't want to be in right now. Um, I don't know if this has been the right way. Um, I feel like this whole country is nothing but divided. And sometimes I feel like it's purposely. Um, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. so I'm not going down that path. Don't worry. Um, I'm not into politics. I'm just kind of a realist. And if you're a human being, I care about you. Um, being a... Being a police officer in this township and also living in a township, which is against everybody's, excuse my language, don't shit where you eat. Um, it's call against the, everybody's knowledge as cops. You don't want to run into, you know, people you might have had bad interactions with, or maybe you had to arrest somebody that didn't like you. I do shop here. I raise my kids here, but there's a reason for that. I love this township. I'm originally from Harleysville, the other side of the county. And when I grew up there, it was nothing but farmland. There really wasn't much to do. Um, my wife will make fun of me and say I grew up in the 50s when I tell her things that I still had milk delivered to my door when I was a kid. Um, but my wife is the reason why I'm actually here. It's her fault I lived in Flower Town. <laughs> Anybody from Flower Town or this township knows you cannot get people out of this township. They always want to come back. But that's good reason. And that's why I'm raising my kids here. Because I feel safe enough. And that's why I enjoy this township. And there's only, only a couple of people in this room that will understand this unique position as living and working here. I understand it because I take a huge, huge amount of pride in my job and everything I do to the point where I actually take on way too much. Hopefully by now my other officers are stopped watching the online feed. Um, I take on way too much. Um, for the commissioners up here, they do know, I do pretty much almost the majority of the community related events. Coffee with a cop, I'm sorry, I haven't done it in a while. COVID hit us and I haven't gotten back on track. National Night Out, to name a few. I try to do as much as I can solely because I want everybody in this township to meet our officers outside of a call for service. That's the whole point I do it. Nobody gets to see that side, an informal interaction, right? And in there, that's where we can get each other's perceptions, right? And understand why the flag means so much to me and everybody else. Now, I don't speak for anybody else in my township any other of my officers, anybody else in the PVA. But for me, it means a lot. Until you stood at the foot of a couple of caskets, numerous ones in some cases for others, of a fellow brother or sister, some you may have never met before, but you know what they're doing. And yes, we choose this profession, but that's the risk. And hopefully we never have to get to that risk, but some unfortunately do get that ultimate sacrifice. And they leave behind families and children and things like that. And for that, that flag will always fly in my house. There's no intent of racism behind it at all. I hope you understand that. And that's why I think we need to have more conversations. I spoke with some people after this meeting on Monday and had beautiful conversations. Some people up here have had said beautiful words, and it's been great. Um, and I hope to talk to more of you um, because Springfield is better than this. We don't need to be like the rest of the world and be divided. Um, I'd rather sit down and have that cup of coffee. Coffee's not your forte. We can do hot chocolate. I don't care. You want a popsicle? We can do that. Um, I'd, rather have, I'd rather have that conversation with all of you. That way I can understand your perceptions and get families and faces and names behind what exactly your issues are, rather than just hearing or hearing results from a survey or hearing that there's many people that... I, that it's hard to, for people to grasp that. You've heard it here because everybody asks, well, what's the number? What's the number? That doesn't matter. It doesn't. But what matters is the faces and the names behind it and then the meaning. And I don't, I don't expect to understand where everybody comes from. I don't expect for everybody to agree with me, 
That's the beauty of everything. We can disagree. You can like the Dallas Cowboys. I'll disagree with you all day long. But you can still sit next to me and watch the game with me. I know that's a completely different level than what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> completely different level, maybe. Um, but I hope to see more of you at these community events because I want you to meet our officers. And we're going to do more. I'm going to do more um, to facilitate that. Just being at this last meeting Monday and this one just shows that I need to do that um, for the betterment of our department and our relationship. The relationship with our commissioners has been growing even better as of late. Um, for those of you who don't know, the most recent contract that we, we settled on is the first time, at least since I've been hired, and well before that, the other people are going to test you that we've actually come to an agreement on and not gone to like arbitration. And that's a massive step, in my opinion. And yes, these conversations are horrible, but like even Eddie has said in previous meetings, they need to be had. Things need, might need to get worse before they get better. Hopefully this is the worst. I don't think there needs to be anything worse. If you knew our, if you got the chance to meet our officers, you'd understand what the flag means to them. We would also get to understand what it means to you. Um, again, as I take pride and I do too much, the other thing I do here is I, I take care of most of the background investigations for these officers that come in here. Three minutes. No. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding, keep going. <laughs> So I do take an extra vested interest into what comes into this township. Now I can only work with the list that's handed to me off at that point. I don't involve myself with anything prior to that. Um, but once I get a list of names, it's my job to go through and find candidates that are worthy to work in Springfield Township. If there's anything that precludes them from employment, it's my job to find it and rule them out. Um, which is why I have no problem holding these community events so you can see what is here and learn and meet these people and re, you know, find out what they are rather than just someone in a uniform showing up in a police car. We're not just people of authority. We have lives outside of this. I'll be happy to tell you about it. If any of you golf, come join me. Be happy to take your money. <laughs> but I just hope that we can move forward with this. As for the resolution, I don't know if it solves much in what the grand scheme of how this all started. I really don't. Um, if it passes, I hope you follow through with everything you're supposed to do, because if you don't follow through with any type of enforcement or responsibility for what happens to it, then you're doing the people that wanted this resolution a disservice. Um, and if it doesn't, we're still going to move forward. Um, and the PBA is still going to hold as many events as possible and give back this community as much as possible, irregardless of what you think of us. Um, so please, if you see us on the street or if you have any ideas for community events, please come see me. I sit in this office. I try to get out as much as I can. Um, I'm not in patrol anymore. I haven't been in about six years, um, so I won't be the one pulling you over so you can't talk to me. Um, but please uh, come to me and I'll try to do some more community events where we can all come together peacefully and not going at each other like unfortunately we have been. That's all. Hey, Rob. <clears throat> Rob. <clears throat> hey, Rob. Sorry, what, I just have one question. Is it true you're the only? police officer that lives in works here? I believe so. That might change shortly. Okay. Um, I won't give out names because he's still on the street driving, so he will pull you over. Um, I know. But no, I, for the last, I can't remember who, I think, I think Sergeant Ray Potter would have been the last one. So after that, then yeah, I was for the longest time. Okay, great. Excuse Thank me. Thank you. Commissioner, do you mind if I ask Rob a quick question? About it. And maybe contextualize it a little bit uh, on the timeline of things. I know a lot of people had questions about the timeline and how many conversations were had, so on and so forth. From my view, and I don't know if everyone here agrees, uh, my perspective was that we were hoping to keep um, this conversation until it was ripe to bring to the public fairly quiet. And that was the intent of the requests, the intent of, hey, can we help pony up cash to help you make a change? Can we do anything here? Yeah, without, um, without and, getting too much into it, I'm not. Right, and I'm not asking you to, you know, re yeah, right. re represent everyone else. I don't, I, the, the, the president will yell at me, but um, no, we did have meetings. Um, there were meetings that were discussed and we did discuss things, absolutely. I, I, that's full honesty. Um, some things on facts might be, be a little off, 
again, recollection is not always the best for any of us. Um, it, you know, it, things were handled in certain ways. I wish things were handled in different ways. Um, and, and I'll leave it at that. But yes, there were, we did have conversations. We did have a couple meetings. I was not present for all of them uh, due to scheduling. And, and, and so, was, so was members of um, the PBA. I know some of the meetings were requested for us to attend to. Scheduling uh, a lot of the people that are in these higher up positions inside the PBA are also have new family members in their life. So it's, it's very tough. And not all, all live as close as me. <laughs> So. Well, I, I say that for context, because I, I want to be sure everyone's clear that many meetings have happened, some with some of us, some one-on-ones. I personally have had some one-on-ones, um, all genu generally to kind of keep the temperature down, as, as folks have said, knowing how people feel in both directions. And I think that's important to uh, recognize that really wasn't until, as um, Commissioner Lee said, uh, I know we're very informal, Jim said, um, end of the summer, did we feel, and I, I say this because I know officers are listening, um, that we had to take any action because really we were operating at, from my perspective, from, from my constituents, we're operating in good faith. Hey, um, we understand this is important to you, but this is also important to us. Can I give you some time? Can I give you some space to figure this out? I hope you figure it out. And I hope we can mutually figure it out to the point where there was a compromise flag that, um, as you, as we all know and have heard, it's a black field with a blue line. Uh, some folks are wearing it here today. Uh, I'll be honest with you, uh, Commissioner Graham is totally cool with that. Personally, uh, from my view of history, it still has problems, but I'm totally comfortable moving in that direction if that would help us just not have to have a fewer. Um, down the line, right? And so I wanted to express for those who asked the question of the timeline, how many conversations we had. I, I think we can stick with many, many iterations of them, um, but all of it, because in good faith, we recognize that there are many attachments to this symbol and many outcomes of how the symbol has been used that unfortunately has twisted it in many different ways. Totally recognize that, totally recognize that it might take some time to work through that for everybody. On, in, in every direction. Um, and that's and how this has come to bear, that it feels like a long time. But it does, up, but the up, only up thing the missing, August, the only thing missing from those meetings, which I thought then and now has been confirmed since Monday, is this here. This absolutely. is what's missing. Not coming from Eddie Graham, coming from you, coming from, it's, it's always one-on-one -on -one or people giving me their viewpoints. And that's great. And I think this might be even something offense to anybody standing up here that we have to leave you out of. And this I, might be a conversation for us and you. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I think that's that's the direction of, of, of what I want to say. And, and you know, I did prepare remarks, but I just want to clarify the timeline feels long, but part of it is because in good faith, if I'm operating with someone and trying to give them space to figure stuff out, hey. Let's make a deal on whatever, a, 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 a car. I need some time to figure it out. Well, hey, I'm in no rush. Let's figure this out and let's not put on a big show because um, my neighbor really wants my car, you know, or what have you. And, and that was part of it. And that was August. And then guess what? It takes some time for us in a, just a few meetings. Uh, sometimes we're not able to make all the meetings our, ourselves to say, hey, what's our next step? Which as everyone knows, was a letter in November. All right. And then guess what? They, respect, they sent a letter back, top of December. We had a meeting just a few days later. And then after that meeting, uh, because of the changes, hearing everyone's uh, concerns about the, the, the resolution that we had drafted, hoping to bring this to the fore, because now it's time, the appropriate time to bring it to the fore. Um, let's take it back and uh, we'll bring it up in January, which unfortunately, I think uh, optically, because it fell between law enforcement day, which I, I think some people felt this was somehow intentional. And, and, and of course, Martin Luther King Day is coming up, Black History Month is coming up. Uh, on the one hand, it feels a little bit unfortunate. On the other hand, it feels potentially fortunate that we're able to address both sides of that in this moment. And um, I hope I didn't take up too much time, Commissioner. I just, this is no, a, rare, a rare instance that we've had 
uh, Rob uh, here and, and representing uh, himself, of course, uh, but also to confirm the timeline that we're not just making these things up in the air, uh, that these are things that happen and, and this is how real negotiations and real conversations work with the limitation that we only meet once a month. <laughs> so I just wanna contextualize that a little bit. Yeah. And to your point, um, it's probably more Monday than tonight, a number of people did bring up, why don't you guys, why don't you guys meet? Why is it like this? Why didn't you talk about it? And we didn't just, it was kind of wild, so we didn't get real way address it, but um, we did, you know, we did in various ways and in good faith. So, so just for those that are here tonight and weren't here Monday, you should know that. I think you made a mistake by giving out your, uh, your volunteering, your services for community outreach. I'm stretched already. <laughs> yeah, too late, too late you are. I got you on record saying that we will be reaching out to you for those community. I think no, community I, I, and policing is so important uh, in order to, <clears throat> after this evening, to facilitate further conversation uh, so that we can all be together as a community. It's, it's so. tough to to take on that full on dedication just because we're not a large department. We don't have the manpower to dedicate a person to a community service or community policing officer. If we had more numbers, we'd probably be able to do that. Um, as was talked before, you know, the, the numbers for people wanting to be officers right now is very low. We just held a consortium and the numbers were the lowest it's ever been. And it's just because of the atmosphere, a lot, a lot of people don't want to come out and be police officers. It's it's a thin pool to get to. So you can imagine going through a background investigation, it gets even smaller. Um, and it's it's not because people don't want to come to Springfield for this. It's a lot of it is, and it's- It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Um, but a lot when you're in any new starting officer that or did start can attest to this, you're going to look at what's the highest pay rate in the, when you first start. What's your starting salary? What's the future look like? What's the finishing salary? And that is what everybody's looking at nowadays. So it's not necessarily issues. A lot of it also has to do with, can we be competitive enough to compete to pull more people here? That was my ploy to get more payment. <laughs> Still got you on tape saying I can call you though. <laughs> Sir? My name's Drew Hines. Um, I live on T Road. And um, I keep hearing that somehow this resolution is about protections regarding the First Amendment. And I'm kind of confused by that argument. We all represent various institutions and organizations. And these institutions and organizations have the right to restrict our speech. When I go back to school on Friday, I have to watch what I say there because they can remove me from the campus. When I go to work this summer, the same, the same thing applies. When I coach baseball this summer as well, the same thing applies. The township has the ability to restrict um, employees of the township from displaying the thin blue line American flag while working. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? All right, uh, can't read your handwriting. All right, great. Thank you everyone for your, for your commentary. At this time, uh, public comment is closed and we will get to our uh, committee reports. And I guess we start with me, right? Yep. <clears throat> All right, um, obviously uh, the, the larger topic of discussion, resolution 1592, the thin blue line American flag. I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt resolution 1592 prohibiting the publicly visible display or use of any image that depicts the thin blue line American flag symbol by any township employee, agent, or consultant. In an effort to be clear and as reasonably limited as possible, the resolution specifically prohibits the following. The publicly visible depiction of the symbol on the clothing or skin of any township employee, agent, or consultant while on duty during the work day of the individual or while representing the township in any way, specifically including the off-duty time of any such individual if still wearing the township uniform. Two, the publicly visible depiction of the thin blue line American flag symbol on any personal property of any township employee, agent, and consultant, which is brought into the township building, which, excuse me. Um, yeah, let me start that over. The publicly uh, visible depiction of the thin blue line American flag symbol on the personal property of a township employee, agent, or consultant, 
except prior to or subsequent to going on duty or any official assignment for the township. Which is brought into the township building and which in the reasonable opinion of the township manager is placed in a location likely to be seen by a member of the public while visiting the township building. And three, the display by installation or a fixation of a publicly visible depiction of the symbol on township owned property, including township vehicles by any person. That is my motion. I second. We have a motion and we have a second. Any comment or questions? Uh, Mr. President, I have a brief statement I'd like to uh, read into the record. Um, First of all, I wanna thank everyone who has attended these meetings. I wanna thank uh, both Monday and tonight. I wanna thank everyone who has contributed their thoughts via email to the township and to the individual uh, commissioners. Um, uh, I wanna especially thank uh, Commissioner Graham, Commissioner Lee, uh, Commissioner Ratzavon uh, for their leadership on this issue. But most importantly, I wanna thank the police for their understanding of this issue and, and for how uh, obviously they do understand it. Uh, uh, it's not an easy issue, it's a complex issue. It, it may not be a, as black and white as it appears in the, in the, um, in the resolution, but uh, I, I do believe that uh, over the last 18 months, as we've heard testimony, we have uh, extended numerous opportunities for compromise um, with the with the PBA, and regrettably, uh, they have all been uh, rebuffed. So, um, after extensive testimony, both pro and con regarding this symbol, um, and with the full opportunity of uh, 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 and counsel of staff and and our legal department. Um, we have had to review, um, review this ordinance. This, we, had to, we had to prepare this resolution uh, and, and, uh, and uh, attempt to clarify how our current code of conduct uh, will ad be addressed and changed regarding this symbol both for officers, uh, on officers' persons and on ta township properties. Uh, it's become clear to me that this symbol is widely perceived by some within our community as represented, representative of, uh, of hate groups associated with the white supremacist movement. It's also very clear to me that the, that the police department and many, many local citizens feel equally strongly that, that this symbol is very, very positive and supportive for their, for their groups uh, and depicts the many sacrifices that our police and first responders have to face daily to keep our community safe uh, uh, and prosperous. Um, I firmly believe uh, that both depictions are true uh, accurate and sincere. But as a public official, we must embrace the concept of neutrality, which Commissioner Ratzavon so eloquently described on Monday at Monday night. Um, and, and these symbols uh, cannot be allowed to exist uh, if they cause offense to any group of citizens within our community. And for those reasons, uh, I will support this resolution 1592. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other comments? Um, I, I just have one quick comment. And I just wanted to say that I'm sure uh, as this body ha has known throughout uh, all of the discussions that we've had concerning this, um, that I was really um, one of the major opponents of trying to push about bringing about some sort of conservative, I mean, I'm sorry, constructive change and addressing this emblem. Uh, sometimes 
um, because I know where I grew up, as this gentleman was telling you, I grew up uh, for, with different experiences in dealing with the police department uh, than a lot of us here present, uh, having grown up in North Philly, uh, predominantly in West Philadelphia. Um, however, I must say that this, uh, I am not agreeing in all of the tenets of this resolution, uh, but I do think that it is a small step toward the progress of making this community come together. Um, once again, I will also be leading co uh, conversations that I hope that the community, our police department and our residents can come together and voice their opinions in a rational and family way. My wife sitting here, I love her to life, but every day she gets on my last nerves and we go at it. But at the end of the day, I get together in bed and I say, baby, I love you. And that's what community is all about. So regardless of the false rumors that you may have heard of how contentious I am concerning the police department, I hope that these few meetings, the, uh, these last two meetings have helped to change your opinion of me because I love uh, where I live. I love our, uh, well, I don't love you guys, but I like you a lot, uh, our police department. And I hope that this can be a small step in the direction of making this township unified because that's what it's all about. We look at civil rights, all of civil rights met with contentious behavior as I'm seeing now from some of the heads, but I love Springfield. I respect and appreciate our police department and I will support this resolution because it is a step toward making us a family. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Eddie. Mr. Graham, any other comments? Well, I, I can make a, I'll make a couple of comments. I'm, this is, a, this is a, an issue that I've been wrestling with for you know, it's been a, well over a year. And I, you know, what I try to do is, is be as objective as I can. And I will tell you that uh, when this thing came up, I had never heard of the blue flag, a uh, blue line flag. Uh, didn't have an opinion about it one way or the other. And um, since then I've been, I guess, well-educated. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the question is why can't I just get over it? Like some people have, you know, asked, and I'm going to read a little comment that was sent to me by uh, one of our residents actually today, and she's a, she's a school teacher. And this really kind of, for me, hits the nail on the head. And she writes, in education, we teach about intent versus impact when it comes to communication. In this concept, we explain to our students that they may have a positive intention, but that the impact of their words or actions is also their responsibility. We all have a responsibility for both the intent and impact of our words and actions. At this moment, it is clear that the intent with the Springfield Township PBA is not malicious or racist. They have shared that, but the impact, however, has landed on many community members as decisive, disrespectful, and racist. And I don't think that the symbol in and of itself is necessarily uh, racist or, uh, you know, in opposition of uh, social justice, as one person here was saying, uh, but apparently a lot of people have taken it that way. And in fact, I, uh, um, I proposed, and this is when I was the president, I proposed, you know, why don't we do this? Why don't we make a patch that doesn't have the flag on it or the blue line and stick it on all of our police uniforms. That would be a great idea. I still think it's a great idea. Didn't go over that well, I guess, but anyway. And I wouldn't have a problem wearing that myself, you know? So uh, I, I guess when it came down to the idea of, of writing this resolution, uh, there were sort of a number of things that I thought that I could be okay with, and I think I still am. Um, and the first thing is that I believe that the way we've written it and crafted the, the language, it's fairly innocuous and it's maybe redundant, but it does send a message to the people who are impacted and people that we care about. And it's a message that says, we care about you. And I think as commissioners, as you know, government leaders, I think that's what we're up here to try to do. So secondly, uh, we're focusing on a symbol. We're not focusing on the PBA or the, or the police, and I think that the PBA is, is a great organization. 
and the police are great. And you know, this is not about that. And and third, I I feel that you know, and I'm hopeful that this will put a lot of this to rest uh, and not carry this forward. And you know, I know in some of our discussions, you know, there are people who have been asking what what are we going to do about this or that. You know, after the the PBA rejected the change in the in the logo, and there was some idea that you know maybe we should litigate or whatever. I will go on record to say I am absolutely not against that. I'm absolutely against that. And if it comes up, I'm just gonna not be at the meeting because I'm just not gonna take part in it. I'm just not going there. And that's, you know, I'm hoping that this is just the end of it and we can do the right thing and, and you know, move on to, you know, better communication. So those- Is that all we have to do to get you to not come anymore? That's it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> You can give me Val, Val uh, you know, old job, right? <laughs> anyway. Uh, I, I have some remarks if no one else would like to go. I'm going to scoot over here. As you know, I speak softly and I promised everyone I would speak up a little bit. Um, I tried to, first of all, thank everyone for your time and dedication to this topic in every direction. You've heard me speak on this many times, so I don't think anything that I'm saying is going to be news to you. My position uh, in general has not changed, um, but in good faith, I listen to every comment. I think most of you know, I try to respond to every email. I may have missed a few. Uh, definitely this week, if you didn't get a response, you may not, <laughs> just because there were many at once. Um, and I'm focused on whether this specific resolution uh, should pass, but I want to address some of the topics that came up uh, today and, of course, that came up on Monday. Uh, first, you know, there was a, to kick this off, uh, for me, I keep hearing, well, how many have to care? Uh, they haven't shown up, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, echoing Commissioner Wilson's uh, remarks that uh, how do we view our role as a public official, in my opinion, for, and this is a message to my constituents and anyone in Springfield, if you have a problem, the first step is identifying it, sharing it, and identifying it. And um, that's enough for me to take action as much as I can. Whatever it is that we can do about that problem, let's try to craft a solution. I'm not saying it's going to work, not saying it's going to happen, but let's at least try to craft a solution. And that's the first step. And so if it's one, then it's one, because most likely, except for problems like this that clearly touch many people, that problem's gonna be pretty unique to you, most likely. No one else lives in that home or walks that route or, or does exactly what your problem is. And sometimes there are bigger problems than that, like this. Uh, so I just wanna address that element of it. Uh, also, uh, I think there's concern about what are we even doing here? Uh, you know, Commissioner Cobb on Monday and many times have said, you know, we've been unequivocal uh, that this is a place, uh, uh, that this is no place for hatefulness. Um, but actually, I think the only reason we're even in a position to do this resolution is that it would appear to some residents that there may be some equivocating, some uncertainty. And if we're to be unequivocal and there is any doubt, let's just clarify that. So this does actually do a few things, um, some perfunctory, uh, and some of the perfunctory actions would be identify that it's not sanctioned in response to those receiving conflicting messages as to whether this symbol is representative of our township as originally brought to four, as we know. Um, we clarify the symbol is just not sanctioned by the township. We clarify it for management because at the end of the day, this is a township manager who we trust who has to interact with staff and he needs consistent clarity uh, to enforce the current codes of conduct, which generally does regulate some offensive symbols currently uh, with the standard. Uh, and I think someone suggested we could release some of the standards that we operate with totally for that. Uh, one of the standards, and I quote, is could be interpreted to be dot, 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 discriminatory, extremist, or racist, among other things. And where there is any question for our township manager or the staff, this prevents any ambiguity. And finally, there's clarity for constituents. Uh, as you may have heard, uh, some residents have claimed to see to have seen this symbol on township property uh, in a police officer's office, 
and what have you. And we wanna be able to provide the clear uh, basis and guideline to remove that symbol if and when they may encounter the symbol in a place that it shouldn't be. And once again, that's the clarity for everybody involved. I do wanna step away and tell a little bit of a story. Uh, you may not know, or maybe you do, that Commissioner Maxwell and I both hail from Northeast Ohio or his family, I can't exactly recall, go bucks for both of our families. Sorry, everyone here. Um, but I mentioned this because we are really not vanguards in making this position. Uh, incidentally, uh, in Northeast Ohio, a town called Solon, Ohio, made national news on this topic in July of 2021. I mention it uh, because of our personal connections, my personal connection to the area, and also the statement that the chief said there, I thought was very salient for everyone to hear. And I quote, it is unfortunate that the thin blue line imagery has been associated with extreme and dismissive, and dismissive views that are counter to our values. Nonetheless, we are sensitive to the fact that it alienates us from those we are committed to serve and protect, end quote. So I'm swayed by this idea that anything that could have a tendency to alienate, alienate any portion of the all of us, of the some of us, shouldn't be permitted. I think anyone who would want to potentially, or anything that would potentially erode the trust between the public and the government, uh, something that we all need for our safety and well-being, I think any of you would say, hey, cut that out. Another uh, series of questions that came up for Monday I hear is, well, why is this even problematic? Uh, well, I also want to speak, to, you know, just as an, uh, away from my prepared remarks, this addresses the language issue, right? There's, why is this problematic? I don't see white supremacy and racism and social justice issues. I don't see that. And I'm afraid that that's being subjected on me. I acknowledge that. But also I'm asking those who are experiencing that to acknowledge someone else's reality as well. And that this is really an acknowledgement of someone's reality not necessarily an assertion of finality. Um, so I say that because I wanna address how these conclusions came to be. I don't remember who brought this up. It may have been Ray. Uh, sorry if it was not you, uh, Ray. Um, but the whole community can be harmed by any seeming government affiliation with any problematic symbols. I use problematic very carefully because I do appreciate that some people, many people, came into it innocently, much like Baird suggested. And you made a good point about how can we just simply state using this language uh, that some of these facts about the flag symbolism being contradictory to our values is true. So I wanna address some of those points. Uh, so how these conclusions came to be. First, whether this is actually racist or not, or actually good or not, is not something any of us here as elected officials necessarily can collectively decide for you or anyone. The formation of that sentiment is a conversation for the public square. And while I have my opinion, I have also heard many different interpretations. And because of some of those interpretations are so wildly different, and the worst of it is a violation of the dignity and equality of all, it's not yet a symbol that has earned its place to be used as an official government symbol. Now, symbols change over time. Uh, that may happen one day, that's not today. However, whether it could be interpreted, as you heard the language from the code of conduct, to be racist by any group of people, to me is clear. Based on the history of this particular symbol, distinguished, extracted from, but distinguishable from the actual thin blue line concept, there is enough evidence of its use and impact as a response to the simple assertion that black, black lives matter. And I think it's unequivocal that black lives do have value. No one here would um, deny that. Black lives have equal value to anyone's lives. And anything that could once again be used to erode that basic fact, it's not in alignment with our township's values. And further, that association harms the health, safety, and welfare of individuals in our community, all individuals. Could also be interpreted as representative of extreme views as frequently alluded to by those who associate this with white supremacy or promotion of committing harmful acts against government bodies. While that is not everyone's interpretation, there is sufficient evidence that it could be interpreted as such uh, by people in the community, many of whom have specifically and explicitly expressed that here. Once again, not in alignment. For some of us, there's another concern that you, know, you may not have heard if you have not been in this room before on this topic, 
Um, and you may have heard, uh, I think Jane allude to it uh, on Monday. Uh, one element of concern in our household is what we view is a violation of the US flag code. The flag should never have placed on it or attached to it any mark, insignia, letter, word, number, figure, or drawing of any kind. My husband is a Marine, and uh, it's not just because we like to follow rules that we're so into the flag code, uh, although uh, that's also possible for him. I have a four-year-old, no rules are followed at my house, uh, but there's symbolism in American flags too. And the conflation of the blue line with the American flag sends a message to some of us, like myself, that only if you are loyal to the police can you be truly American, which is not fair to the complicated history many Americans have with policing and policing in this country specifically. And whether you have loyalty to police is different than having loyalty to America. A love of police does not make one American, nor does having a complicated relationship with police make one un-American. As echoed by residents on Monday, police officers have taken up the difficult mantle of responding to all of us in our most dire times of need, regardless of our personal opinions on just about damn anything. Uh, and it's a right that members of many of our families, myself included, risk their lives for. We started this meeting by pledging allegiance to the flag, but there is no expectation we pledge pure allegiance to the police, nor should, nor do the police expect it, as you've heard. But the sign, the thin blue line, when it's merged with government materials, like the flag, however, sends a conflicting message to some members of the community, like myself, like my Marine husband, and it's one that we absolutely do not endorse because it makes me feel a little less American if I don't put on a symbol out there. And that's just not true. Now, in sum, all of these associations are relevant. So I'm sorry I had to belabor them, but it's really important to, to break it down that they, they all are relevant and they make some and not a small number of people feel unsafe, and I emphasize unsafe for a variety of reasons, as you've heard, and particularly the already marginalized among us. And anyone, by the way, who fears interactions with police or state agents uh, in the first place, or I frankly, fear interactions with anyone, um, but specifically the police and state agents are marginalized because the balance of power is against you. The reality is police and the government, ourselves included, do have the greater hand. I believe in the professionals that work in this building and believe in the professionals that do policing in Springfield Township. And they clearly, as you've heard, wanna build our whole community up and we can do that better. So long as this symbol is not involved. Now, there was talk on Monday uh, of people, and you heard my, my re reassignment of the, the timeline a little bit. There was talk on Monday of people with differing views coming together to sit down and talk with each other. And I appreciate um, you know, Rob for, for mentioning that he's gonna facilitate that. I think that's a great idea. It's only gonna further healing and understanding that will be incredibly healthy for our community. And it's unfortunate that it's had to be done in this public way at this stage. Uh, but nonetheless, that future conversation and those future conversations can't and should not supersede a vote on this resolution tonight. Uh, I think the board would love to facilitate a program for everyone to do that. Uh, but part of that requires removing any obstacles to the sense of safety and security that would invite good faith conversations. And this symbol being used anywhere by our government is one of those obstacles. I've said before, I said it on Monday, we cannot go around the symbol much as one might wish. We must go through it. And by through it, I mean, remove the obstacle. It cannot be leveraged if people are really interested in good faith dialogue. And removing that obstacle uh, to, toward a healthy conversation set is going to help us move toward the goals of equality and safety for all of us. And that's why I'm in favor of this resolution tonight. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, I guess I'll just say something briefly. Thank you. Um, I also just want to thank um, everyone over the last two nights, but certainly over the last year and a half, or as long as we've been having this debate. And um, I have uh, heard a lot and listened a lot. <clears throat> and it is a it is a very difficult um, topic for a lot of different reasons. Um, I know that I left on Monday night 
and uh, laid awake for all night, just sort of tossing and turning, just because it just it was just hard to settle down. And and I feel like I've had that tossing and turning, and not um, since then, uh, just to kind of have it escalated again tonight. Um, and I say that you know with, with except I mean it's this this is supposed to be hard uh, because at the end of the day we're not necessarily litigating or talking about a symbol, which you know, sort of we're dancing around it and we were talking about it, but we're also talking about a legacy of this country um, that we've never addressed. Uh, we've never gone through the process of, of digesting in a public way. Um, and, you know, our community is doing that, our country's doing that. Um, we do it in a very ham fisted way. Um, brought up by a couple of people tonight and was brought up in some of the email correspondence, the, the, the value or the uh, imperative of having uh, mediators or professionals to you know, work through the stuff. And I, and I, see, I see real value in that. Um, and I think that everyone who got up on any side of this uh, debate over the last two days, um, you know, really showed a trem tremendous amount of courage. Um, you know, again, talking about a very, very difficult subject. Um, the part that I just wanted to reiterate, because I think it's important, um, because particularly in some of the correspondence that, that I received and that we received from residents was, you know, something to the effect of absolutely not, uh, this, this flag shouldn't be on our cars or on township property. And, um, you know, I think it's very important to reiterate that uh, it's never been on the police cars. Um, it's never been part of the official uniform. Um, and there have been instances in the past um, where elements have been uh, added on to the official uniform, whether it was a face mask um, or, you know, different, di different points, different things. Um, and I think that would be acknowledged as well by the members of the police department. Um, I think that since the advent of this debate um, and the sensitivity to all of that, um, you know, I think they acknowledge, you know, they're, they're, they're sticking to the uniform. Um, and so to the one piece that I think is important is, um, you know, we do have a policy that is in place now that does address any outside symbol, anything outside of, you know, what is confined to um, uh, township uniforms, township dress codes, what's appropriate on township property. Um, and I would personally advocate that we continue to uh, enforce that piece. Um, and uh, and recognize that you know because that encompasses all things, um, and it was, it was brought up by uh, Detective Rob, but um, you know we did have a very good history in the township prior to the pandemic and prior to lockdowns of uh, really good community outreach in the part of the police department in the form of the coffee with the cop, um, our night out events. Um, and it is a shame that that kind of got halted a little bit um, during the pandemic. Um, we had several uh, community-based meetings on various topics. Um, and I think there was real momentum there that did get slowed down. Um, but the opportunity for that uh, to continue, I think, does bode well for the future. Um, I'm not as optimistic as some of the other members of the board about this ending the debate, but I also don't think that's a bad thing at all. Um, I actually think, you know, in some ways now the hard work begins um, because I think that, that we should continue to talk about it and we should try to find ways to do it in a, in a, in a, in a positive way. Um, it is a shame that we only had one member of the department uh, speak because, you know, their feelings on the flag, I think was, it's important here and it's important to find ways that we can get that as part of the conversation. Um, but I think their absence speaks to their professionalism. Um, and as Rob said, you know, none of them want to be involved in this forum. Um, but they're more than willing to talk about um, what the symbol means to them um, and uh, just how, um, you know, important it is. And I think for me, that was the big takeaway because I, I really did, I, I heard everyone. I heard everyone. And particularly people um, who I have no ability to, to walk in their shoes or appreciate how their life is. Um, I heard them talk about uh, in a very eloquent way, um, the fear they have for when their, their kids leave the house. Um, the, the legacy that is complex, 
between um, law enforcement and um, certain parts of our population has to be acknowledged. Um, and I also know, and I heard from other conversations and private conversations I've had with members of our police department, um, you know, just how dangerous it is to be a police officer. And yes, it's, an, it's a profession they choose, but we have, um, you know, prol proliferation of guns and uh, a, a lack of um, respect for life. And um, so for their families, for their spouses, for their kids, when they leave the house in the morning, you know, they, and this is for both sides, all sides of the argument, they don't know if they're going to come home. And so I, I, I heard that loud and clear. And I think the one thing I, I, I probably didn't do a good job was, and that's, you know, Commissioner Graham, I, I also heard you through this whole debate. And while I disagreed with you, um, I did hear you and I didn't dismiss what you say. Um, but I, but I, and I want you to know that and I want all the members of the board to know um, that while I have disagreed with um, I think we've how we've tr we've chosen to address this issue. Um, it doesn't mean that I don't hear you and, and certainly don't take to heart what you say. Um, and it's been brought up a lot, and I think it's worth bringing up again um, that this is not an issue that Commissioner Graham uh, drove. Uh, it's not a single person issue. This is an issue that has been brought up by members of the community, um, and um, you know I think it's important that. Uh, I just I just differ with how we go about addressing that, and so my hope is as we move forward, um, you know, to tap on, um, you know, as again Detective Rob said, in some ways, you know, lead it to to members of the, of the public and members of the department to to kind of continue this conversation, but I think that we have an opportunity to um, to facilitate that and to to develop that in a way, and so I'm I'm very optimistic, um, but at the same time. I do view, do view that tonight's vote, um, I do wish that we weren't doing it because I do view it as uh, antagonistic and kind of further perpetuating this uh, conversation to a place that kind of further divides us. But again, that's just my, my view. And as I said to you this today, uh, uh, when we spoke on the phone, uh, Mr. President, I, I thank you for your leadership um, throughout this process because you have been, uh, you know, I think front and center as far as taking, you know, a lot of the uh, difficult moments. Um, and again, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very difficult topic. And it's not one that, you know, I, I take easy at all. Um, but I do wish that, um, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, and so, uh, so with that, I will, um, I will be um, not supporting this. Um, but recognizing that um, there's more work to do. So, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Cup. Any other comments? I just wanna, something I, I feel like didn't really get addressed and it will I hopefully get addressed as we work a program uh, going on. First, um, you know, I said the acknowledgement of people's reality is important. And I would say the other problem is, is really that acknowledging um, that reality is equally as important as ensuring the good morale of the people in the police department. It's equally important. Acknowledge our reality and ensure you have good morale. And if there's any actual reason that you might suspect or be concerned that there is a lack of support uh, which we've heard many times uh, to, for the police officers, specifically in this township, over which we do have purview. Hey, come on up. What do you need? Is it, you know, I'm just coming up with the, an idea, for example. I've heard people say they, they go through a lot of trauma, which we know they do. It just, it's true. We've heard it here tonight. Is it more uh, services to deal with that trauma? <coughs> Absolutely willing to support that. Let's let's create a solution to solve those problems. Whatever it is that support looks like, you know, let's bring that to the fore. I once again want to re-echo that, you know, having to say that I support you uh, through symbols for me in our household uh, in order to, to receive that support. I and mean, we just don't agree with that conceptually. You know, uh, I'll just leave that part at that. But but what support you need, I think. Most of us, all of us, as far as I understand it, are willing to go that extra mile, you know, 
final mile and extra mile. And so I want to be sure that we leave that as the as the um, segue out of this vote, that this does not reflect a lack of support at all. And maybe the inverse, that this is an invitation uh, to ask for what that is. But also with the invitation, I do encourage, you know, given this platform, that uh, those folks might consider making a change given the compromise that has been there all along, which um, I will say I may be even further away from that than Mr. Graham is ultimately. But again, that's that's where I want to leave it. Thank you so much for your leadership as well, both Mr. Graham and uh, Mr. Lee on this issue. Thank you. Any other comments? All right, well, um, if you know me by now, you know I'm going to join the Yap Fest. Sorry to uh, make you suffer through more, but um, this is, um, you know, come to a head. Um, we're here voting on something significant, so kind of got to leave it all on the table. Um, and I think it's really important. I'm not, what I'm not really, what I'm going to talk about, I'm not really going to try to convince anyone that's, that's sort of dug in or, or maybe dug in isn't even the right word. You've, you have your beliefs you bring, you've listened, you've contemplated. Maybe you change your mind a little bit, maybe a lot, I don't know. But probably at this point, you're, you're where you're gonna be. But I think it's important that you hear from your elected officials that, that are making the decisions, how they make their decisions and why, not just the, the bullet point case, but like the thought process. Um, so if you have to sit you know, through a bunch of people talking a little longer, then that's kind of the, the price Sorry. of doing it. That wasn't a you. <laughs> But there's, you know, there's going to be people that, you know, hear about this uh, and make flipping comments and, and wonder why it wasn't done thoughtfully or they're all lousy, vote them out. Um, and that goes, that goes with the job, right? Um, every job gets the, the arrows flung and that's okay. But, um, you know, I, I said a lot of things Monday night too, and a lot of people that tune in, or they may not know about this issue, are going to tune in and they're probably going to watch this video. They're not going to watch Monday night. So... Uh, every every thing is its own animal. So I think you probably know where I stand. I've talked about it enough. And I know in the hearts of many folks that are uh, in opposition to my view. And by the way, my view is not that your interpretation of this is wrong. First time I saw it, I didn't think anything of it. I wasn't offended. In fact, I'm not offended now. Um, but I just came to learn and listen and, and just realize just based on the on the how and the when, why it's more problematic, that version. Um, I'm taking a neutral stance. I'm not telling you what you believe about this is wrong. I'm not telling you in your heart, it doesn't mean honor and respect for police officers, especially police officers that lost their lives in the line of duty. I'm not telling you that. I'm taking a neutral position and saying, I'm getting enough people talk to me and enough are saying, whether you think it's rational or not, this brings me fear and brings me mistrust. And there's enough of that voice that I got to go, all right, I'm an elected official. Like, I'm not really picking a side, but if I got to lean to a side, I'm going to lean towards taking away people's fear. And I know it's very fearful to be a police officer. I can't fathom what it's like to go to work on a daily basis and, and what, in an instant, um, you're asked to do and make a decision in an instant where um, if you go too quick, you're a monster. If you go too slow, you're dead. I just can't imagine. So that's a tough job. And, um, and I feel like there's a lot of similarity between maybe communities of color that have trauma around law enforcement that they carry into other interactions with maybe a police officer doesn't deserve it. And how a police officer brings the trauma of that danger to a stop or an interaction where I gotta be really careful or nervous. Um, so I just, I hope you open your heart a little, a bit wider and just see that some people have had different experiences in our history with law enforcement, what it means for communities of color. I don't speak for communities of color. I don't speak for anyone. I don't speak for white people. Plenty of white people <laughs> would say, you don't speak for me. Um, but just what it means and what it means for generational trauma and trauma you don't know about. Springfield is not full of Springfield people that started. 
people live here that grew up somewhere else. You grew up in a really dangerous part, right? Your, your life experiences that you bring to Springfield are different than other people. People come and go, people that work here may not live in Springfield. Most of our police officers don't live in Springfield. We all bring those experiences, that trauma to this. So we can't look at Springfield, oh, not in Springfield. That doesn't happen in Springfield. It happens other places. It's problems other places, but somehow we're this utopia where racism doesn't exist. Um, but we're pretty lucky. We, we have really high quality problems, which allows us to spend so much time on an issue like this. You know, we're not doing uh, damage control for, a, you know, an unjustified shooting or a bombing or, you know, what, what have you. So um, as Commissioner Ratzvang mentioned, um, that specific um, quote from that police chief in, I think it's Salon, Ohio, that sort of encapsulate kind of the, when I saw that too, I'm like, yeah, that's kind of it. Like, we know that our symbol means to us, but we're sensitive enough that, you know, here's what we're going to do. I know it's popular. I know it's all over. I know there's plenty of black people that aren't offended by it. <clears throat> but as people of positions of authority, us as elected officials, I would put police in that too. We have a larger responsibility to act with empathy and sensitivity for all of our residents. And I think that symbolism, again, very specific to the variation that was popularized as Black Lives Matter was happening, okay? That that symbolism hinders and hurts the work and trust of building that with all residents. I have enormous respect for our police officers, and I'm sure most people in Springfield do. I just, I don't think we should cling to symbolism that's so new. Um, we've, we all had chances and opportunities and no problem honoring police officers prior to 2014. And really 2014 wasn't the, I know that's when it was created, but it really, really took off years after. So it's really young, five, five six years. If anyone has this symbol or a couple of them, you probably got it within the last few years, right? So you, you don't really need it to honor police officers. Again, I'm not passing judgment. I'm not telling you you're... Meaning of it is wrong. Maybe there's extra special meaning because it is so new. Granted, I'm just saying it's pretty new. Um, I will tell you when I saw, when I see the blue line across a police badge that honors police officers killed a lot of duty, it, it's very powerful to me. I think of my friends, I think of my family, they're police officers. I think of my dad who passed in 2021, just before we started this, having this debate. I do wonder what he would think. Uh, if he lasted a couple more months, it probably wouldn't have mattered because the last six months, he was not making a whole lot of sense. But maybe the six months before that, I would love to have this conversation with him. I know he saw it all. My dad was a storyteller. He started in the Philadelphia Police Department in 1969, retired in 1994. Um, Matt, you know, my dad was a storyteller and told a lot of dirty jokes, <laughs> but he saw it all. So he, so I heard every Philadelphia cop story, like, you know, good and bad and funny and the pink bunny suit where they would whack the, whack the guy in the elevator with the, with the orange carrot. If you were in Philly back then, you probably knew what it was. There you go. <laughs> um, there you go. There you go. So I, would, I really wonder what, what he would think, think on this. Um, when I see that symbol, I don't, I don't feel, it doesn't speak divis divisiveness to me at all. When I see that badge and I know a police officer was killed, I just feel sadness and pride and in that moment. Um, when I see the stripes, it's a different experience now, mostly because of this debate. And, People that have come and people that have shared, I've talked about it at nauseum. I'm personally, I'm sick of talking about it, but I'll continue. We have to, but so the meaning for me is different because I'm in a different position. And again, that's why I'm really trying, I'm not judging people um, what they feel about it. Cause I know for most people it comes from a really deep place of respect. It really does. Um, 
and I just want people to open up a little bit. So I really struggled with these comments tonight, and I'm sorry um, that they're long, but I feel like this is, we're at the head, and it's, like I said, it's kind of like, if we don't talk about it again for a while, um, this is what people are going to see. So, and um, so I, I want to highlight the story of uh, Ahmad Arbery. You may have heard of it. Um, and it, let me make this very clear. I am not telling this story as a as a, an application to Springfield. I'm not telling the story that uh, the police in the story are our police. Um, it's just a, it's a story that came back to me in like thinking about the Black Lives Matter movement and just trying to see all the sides of it. And it it just it really hit me. Um, but the issues that we we tackle our American stories. They really are. Springfield is not a utopia and they happen everywhere. But chances are, you know, a little bit about it uh, or a lot about it. It was certainly national news. Ahmad was a 25 year old black man in Georgia. He was chased and killed by three men in their neighborhood uh, in early 2020. They chased him. They thought he was, was doing wrong. They were thinking about a citizen's arrest. They chased him for several minutes. One of them shot, shot him three times as he tried to jog by with a 12 gauge shotgun at, at short range. He was known to jog frequently in that, uh, in that neighborhood. One of the men saw him jog and thought he was a suspect. They, they jumped in their trucks, they chased him, they cut him off. And um, the two men in the first truck, father and son tried to stop him in the street, struggle ensued and they shot him dead. Several, they went through several prosecutors First one who recused herself pretty quickly later was indicted. Um, but several prosecutors determined that no crime was committed and recommended that the, the men not be arrested. In May 2020, a copy of the video, cell phone video that actually the, the guy in the back had somehow made its way to the public. There was outrage. Within two days, two of the men were charged and soon the third man was charged. Ultimately, a jury of white 11 white members and one black member convicted all three men of murder. Two were sentenced to life and one for 35 years. They were also charged federally with hate crimes. The police arrived on the scene in a pretty friendly manner. These father and son, shotgun, blood all over them, standing over this dead Black man, young black man in a pool of blood. <clears throat> um, later, they also released the, uh, the body cam footage. And um, sort of remarkable that these guys were freely walking around, talking about what happened. <laughs> um, to tell their story. Eh, well, we're defending ourselves. The men were not arrested. And I just... Again, I'm, I'm not applying this to Springfield. I'm, I'm applying it to me. I'm trying to, try to tell you what, I'm, what I was thinking about, sort of revisiting that story. And I imagine that scene in America, really anywhere, pulling up on a scene and there's three black men standing over a 25-year-old dead white man in the middle of the street, one holding a shotgun, the other one with a pistol. And I'm just thinking, can I, can I envision any way, any way, can anyone envision that that interaction is the same in America, in any town. I just can't see it. And I thought to myself, and this is why I told the story, and I'm, I'm not saying it to say we're a whole racist and all that stuff. I'm not really not. I just had a moment to myself, I go, if I approached that, would I treat it the same? I, I can't, I wouldn't. I approach the same feeling in my belly, the same suspicion or judgment? No way. And it's painful for me to say that. Take three black men who just murdered an unarmed white man jogging in the street. Drop that scene anywhere in America. Anywhere. You don't think there's a difference? Prosecutors had the video. It wasn't, wasn't a a gotcha video that came out later. They had the video. It wasn't even a hard case. That system decided that, nope, 
nothing. Imagine being the parent of that 25 year old and waiting three months, not even hearing that there's an arrest made when it's all on video, clear as day. You can read about the trial. It was a slam dunk. It wasn't even up for debate. It was so easy. How do you think that turns out if there's no cell phone video? You think those men ever get charged without cell phone video? You know, cell phone, cell phone video, pretty new. Think without cell phone footage, uh, footage Derek uh, Chauvin, whatever his name is, the guy who murdered George Floyd, you think he would have been in jail without cell phone video, let alone even fired? Were the three officers that stood there and watched didn't help while well, the suspect was handcuffed, subdued, face on the blacktop, saying he couldn't breathe. <clears throat> Citizens were there filming that. Without that footage, would they have been in, in jail, even fired? You go back to read the police report. First of all, you, well, if you read the police report, you wouldn't think so. You'd read, all you would read later is that a man was committing check fraud and he died from drug complications. That's what you would read. Hey, if he was committing a crime, he's a criminal, right? He had, it sounded like he had issues. He was committing fraud, arrest him, charge him. Give him the appropriate punishment. He was subdued and no threat, but he was treated subhuman. These were pretty big stories, right? I mean, you know, obviously George Floyd obviously is probably the biggest one that everybody knows about. <clears throat> Did these happen to white people in the same proportion in our country? I don't know. How many times is justice denied and we never know without cell phone cameras? These stories aren't from civil rights textbooks, civil rights chapter of your history book. They're both from 2020. These are the kind of things that make it harder for the majority of excellent police officers to be safe, to be trusted. It's not even about what the officers did. It's what the system did and didn't do. Am I saying our, prof am I saying our professionals in Springfield would take these actions? I am not. We are blessed to have an excellent police force. Are we perfect? Probably not. Take a group of 30 people. Is there one guy who's probably a jerk? Yeah, you can do that with any group of anyone, anywhere. But we got it really good here, right? We can argue about would there, be, would there be more complaints if people felt safe? It's a valid argument. But we're not dealing with, you know, the George Floyd kind of stuff. And so we really have it. We have it good. But Georgia and Minneapolis are not unique. These stories are as American as apple pie. And I think what I've heard from people that, that, feel like this is just those stories aren't believed to be anything but an exception when they happen a lot. So I'm, I'm not black. I don't know what it's like to be a black person. I'm not a police officer. I don't know what it's like to be a police officer. You mentioned teacher. I was a teacher. I do know what it's like to be a teacher. Um, but I don't know what it's like to be a police officer. Not really. I know police officers. I obviously told you my dad was one, but I don't really know. I don't have that experience. But I think those, those stories, that, that was really the impetus, stories like that of the Black Lives Matter movement. Whether you believe it has merit or not, I'm just a white guy with my own opinions, but, um, but I think it's recognition that for so long, things like that happened without accountability. And as they started being more known because of cameras, it's like enough. Okay. So that's sort of the, uh, the impetus there, right? And it's not just policing when it comes to valuing black lives. I mean, again, it's a, again, I'm probably blabbing here and it's not necessarily right on topic, but I'm giving you my thought process a little bit and just sort of talking about this. Like, do we value, do we really value black lives the same? Do we, does the America really care about a missing black girl the way it does a missing white girl? I don't think so. Now, maybe you do personally. You do personally. 
that we really as a society, does our media, does our news care as much? So I don't know. I, again, I'm not black. I would, if you made me play one, I would probably say, is the system working for me? Does the system protect me the same way it does other people? That's what I would say. Luckily, like I said, these issues are less prominent here. Not non-existent, but less prominent. We're safe, we're relatively wealthy. Our daily problems are high quality. We have stability in our government. Township manager, been, been here forever. He knows everything. We have experienced professionals in, in positions of leadership. Our police chief has been here, what, 140 years? Close. I mean, it's just the, the stability we have is awesome. We have an excellent police force, very few issues. We have great schools, property values going through the roof in many neighborhoods. We have a long history of handsome commissioners elected in Ward 3. Oh. <laughs> Just making sure you're listening. <laughs> that was for you, Glenn. We have great sports organizations. We have tons of parent, parent volunteers. I mean, Springfield is a great place to work and live. And I will tell you, this is a silly story, but I also figured out I have an ingrained fear of police. And it's like I said, it's silly, but it just, it, it just occurred to me why it was important. So when I get pulled over and I've been pulled over a few times in my life, an immediate feeling of fear is in my gut. You see those lights and, and it's immediate fear. And it's not, it's not the same fear as other people. I immediately get the fear that I'm a 17 year old kid with a case of beer in the, in the trunk. And I'm going to get busted. Honestly, honestly, God, that's my immediate fear. And you pull over and I get the butterflies in the stomach and my brain starts working. Before the, the cop even comes to the car, the logic starts kicking in and go, dude, you're 46. You don't have any beer in the trunk. And even if you did, they're not calling your parents. So the logic kicks in and the fear goes away. Honestly, that's the only fear. I'm just telling you my personal view. That's the only fear I have. But it just got me thinking that that's a trigger. It's totally involuntary based on my experience. And my logic can make it go away. And I'm just thinking, what other triggers do people have? And it's not just law enforcement. If you don't have a trigger alone, so there's something in your life when something happens, whether it's a sound, a song, or something, triggers something in you that's real. And without probably therapy, it'll probably be there forever. So it just, again, it's silly, but if you've had bad experiences with law enforcement, if your parents had bad experiences and you've just, you know, adopted that generational trauma, you come from somewhere else that was more racist and now you're here. Like, it doesn't just, you cross the border, you go, boop, everything's all right. You bring your own trauma. So if you have a trigger, you have fear, and maybe the police officer goes, well, you shouldn't fear me because I didn't do that. We don't do that here. We're good here. It happens in other places. It happens in Minneapolis or wherever. But like, so that's part of asking people to, to be open to what your triggers are are not the same as what other triggers are. And I guess I'm pretty lucky that mine's like, you know, pretty damn innocuous, but it's real for me. I feel it. Whether I get pulled over on Bethlehem Pike or driving across Texas to go to Dallas, which I did get pulled over twice in a 20 minute period. And both times I got the same feeling in my gut. It was totally involuntary. So do I know the real fear, like what other people do? I don't, I don't. I'm telling you, I don't. I'm just trying to listen. I don't know what it's like to be black. I don't know what it's like to be a cop. Um, I don't know that fear. So I just think we have to, we have acknowledged that those fears are there both for people in the public, that if they're there for the police, even if they're not rational, they're real. So we just can't dismiss those fears and say, well, that's your problem. And it doesn't apply here. So as far as the policy goes, I think you already know I'm in support of it been painful and, and, and anxious to think about it. It's been painful for me personally to think that people see me as anti-police. 
Um, but if your objection is that it doesn't really change anything technically in place, it's not entirely true. It just makes clear that the symbol can't be fixed permanently on township property like parks. Technically, that's not the case now. This codifies that. Again, it does not apply to private events that display things permanently. You get a permit, you want to do a back to blue rally and have this all over. Uh, this does not restrict that. It makes it clear that the symbol should not be visible to the public if they come to the police department and township building, right? We've heard that it, it, it feels like it's distrust. Even if you don't think it's warranted, it does for people. So when people come to the police department, it should just be out of the view. And that's what we're addressing. Your objection is that it's uh, antagonistic to the police. The horse has left the barn. Um, and hopefully this is um, the action we're taking and we move on and build, build trust from there. But the third thing that it does, it just really sends an important message to those that have that fear invoked from the symbol and feelings of exclusion that we hear them. We we're saying that we value and acknowledge their view. We're not saying that we don't value and acknowledge the respect and symbolic meaning that people attribute to this. We're just saying that we feel as a government body that represents everyone and is expected to make the hard decisions, both popular and unpopular, that this helps bridge the gap of trust. And directly to our police officers, even if you don't agree to the debate about the symbolism, even if you don't wanna change the logo for the PBA, um, and you don't want it tarnished, with an opposing view, at least understand um, why some of us feel like we have to take this action and that it's not in any way um, meant to be against our police officers. I just hope it removes the stigma of the, you know, the, the anti uh, or counter to Black Lives Matter that was really important. And I think that stigma is there a little bit. So hopefully it removes that and we can, we can heal from that. So I will vote to support the resolution. I'm sorry for babbling. Any other comments? Three minutes, all right. Um, all right, no more further comments. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Nay. Please record a 5-2 vote. In support of the resolution. Okay, that concludes my report. Uh, we will go to Commissioner Standish, the Chairman of the Community Development Committee. Hey, thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> can, uh, can we do a recess now? Sure. Okay. What's that? Can we do a, can we do a one minute break, a two minute break? Yeah, you know what? I have to be up at five, so could I yeah, do this? Do yours? Okay. Break? Yeah, yep. that'd be great. Okay. Sorry. So, this is resolution number 1593, Falcon Hill Estates. The developer of the Falcon Hill Estates at Winmore Development has offered for dedication to Springfield Township the newly constructed public improvements at the 32 unit single family division, the Office of the Township Engineer, and the Public Works Department. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on one second. Yeah. Okay. All right. Folks, if you could just try to be quiet as you exit. Um, Okay. Thank you. There we go. The Office of the Township Engineer and the Public Works Department have inspected the improvements and agree that they are in a form that is acceptable for dedication. Therefore, I move the Board of Commissioners adopt resolution number 1593, a resolution accepting the deeds of dedication for public use as follows. One, the area within the public rights of way of the newly constructed Star Lane and Henry Way, and two, the area within the public right of way of the newly constructed portion of the Ranch House Lane. All three roads are located in the Winmore section of Springfield Township. Authorization is also hereby granted for the public, for the proper township officials to execute the maintenance agreement for the newly constructed public improvements at the Falcon Hill Estates at Winmore Development. And that is my motion. Thank you, Commissioner Stanis. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any comments or questions on the motion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a unanimous vote. 
Okay, next um, concerning 902 Pleasant Avenue, on or about November 4th, 2022, Patrick Deacon, owner of the property located at 902 Pleasant Avenue, Winmore, filed a subdivision land development application with Springfield Township seeking preliminary approval to subdivide the subject property in order to create four separate parcels upon which three new single family dwellings are to be constructed. The 90 day land development review period imposed by the Pennsylvania municipalities planning code is scheduled to expire on February 13th, 2023. And the applicant has submitted a letter granting an extension of time to the board of commissioners to take formal action on the plan. Therefore, I move that the Board of Commissioners accept a letter dated December 20, 2022 from Patrick J. J. Deacon, extending the 90-day subdivision land development plan review period up to and including March 31, 2023. The extension of time will provide the applicant the opportunity to revise their land development plans to be in compliance with the Springfield Township Code. That is my motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, uh, please indicate you're in favor by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please recording now is about. Okay, and that concludes my report for this evening. Thank you, Commissioner Standish. We'll go to the Chairman of the Environmental Resources Committee, Commissioner Peter Wilson. Thank you, Mr. President. All right. uh, I have a recycling report tonight, and I'm pleased to report that during the month of December 2022, Springfield Township residents recycled 185.7 tons of material with a householder participation rate of 76.5%. The net cost to the township for the month was $28,354.54. For the year ending December 31st, 2021, Residents recycled a total of 2,102.4 tons of single stream recyclables, which was 94.2% of the total projected tonnage. The weekly householder participation rate was 70.4% and the average pounds per drop or pickup was 16 pounds. That concludes my report. Thank you, Commissioner Wilson. We'll go to the Chairman of the Cultural Resources Committee, Commissioner Graham. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Thank you, Commissioner Graham. We will go to the Chairman of Public Works and Facilities Committee, Commissioner Maxwell. Thank you, Mr. President. No report tonight. Thank you for not having a report, both of you. <laughs> uh, next, we'll go to the Chairman of the Administrative Fiscal Affairs and Zoning Committee, Commissioner Cobb. Uh, the sausage gets made. Um, First off, regarding the bill listing, I move the Board of Commissioners approve the December check reconciliation in the amount of $653,386.64 and the January bill listing the amount of $721,281.67. That's my motion. Uh, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any comments or questions? Please signify, <clears throat> excuse me, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Please record a 6-0 vote. Second, finally, uh, the Springfield Township Zoning Hearing Board will meet on Monday, January 23rd at 7 p.m. Uh, within this building, the Springfield Township Building, uh, in which they will hear the following application. Uh, this is the application of Robert J. Orsher, owner of the property located at 8209 Ardmore Avenue in Winmore. Uh, the applicant is requesting a dimensional variance seeking to construct in addition to the existing single family dwelling that will reduce one of the side yard setbacks from 26.8 feet in width to four feet in width. In addition, the second side yard setback is proposed to be reduced from 23.2 feet in width to 16.11 feet. This will reduce the cumulative side yard setback from 50 feet in width to 20.11 feet instead of the required 35 feet. This property is zoned within the A residential district of Ward Number Two of Springfield Township, uh, and again, that will be heard on uh, Monday, January twenty third, at seven p.m. in this uh, room. That's my motion, or that's my announcement. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, Cobb. You can you can indicate that the oh. applicant has requested an extension of time. The applicant has uh, requested an extension. So in actuality, while that had to be announced for legal purposes, uh, it will not be heard. 
his request for an extension. We will be, yeah, his yeah. extension. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Cobb. We will go to the chairman of the Parks and Recreational Resources Committee, Commissioner Ratzavall. Uh, I also have no report this evening. Thank you, Thank Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner Ratzavall. That uh, concludes our committee reports. Uh, I am pleased to announce that the board is once again open to receiving public comment. If you would like to come to the microphone to share a public comment, you may do so at this time. Handsome gentleman in the back, do you have something to say? Okay, all right, hearing none. I would accept a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. We have a motion, is there a second? We have a second, any comments or questions? Who was the second? Commissioner Cobb, Mr. Cobb. Uh, please indicate support by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Um, please record a six year vote and we are adjourned. Right. Uh,